the all-new FM 104 Phone Show with Keith Ward. Different radio for 2017. You're very welcome. It's the all-new F104 phone show with myself, Keith Ward. New year, new show. We decided to kick it off. Sure, why not? It's January the 3rd. I hope your Christmas and uh, New Year uh, went pretty well. Uh, and uh, thank you to all the texts uh, coming in um, over the holidays and in on Facebook. Get us on the F104 phone show Facebook page. Uh, and thank you uh, so much for your well wishes. As I said, it's a new show. Uh, it's a new year and lots coming up on the show tonight. Um, we're going to be talking to uh, Manning. Gary Dargan is going to be live in the studio. He's got a very horrific story. He basically um, he stopped the rest of his family being shot dead in a in a kitchen in Tala. Unfortunately for him, uh, his mother did pass away in this brutal murder. He's going to be live in the studio uh, in about a half an hour's time and kind of telling us about his fear that his mom's killer may soon be out. Um, he may be soon walking the streets and that's his fear that he might have to run into the guy who shot his mother dead uh, also coming up in the show we'll be talking about uh, an email that we got in a little bit earlier on of a woman who says she's forced to go to a drug dealer to buy marijuana and the reason why she's buying marijuana uh, is because she was in a horrific car crash over a year ago and painkillers just don't do her any good so she feels ridiculously guilty for going to a drug dealer we'll be asking tonight if you were in the same position what would you do? If you were in the same position, would you go to a drug dealer if that was the only relief you could get? Or maybe you think that this woman is, I don't know, maybe she's just using it as an excuse to score some weed. 53104 for 20 cent or 6797F104 is the number. The all new FM 104 phone show. Johnny B's in studio. Oh, hey, you man. You Johnny B, does it feel new to you? So new, Keith. So the new. new show. You yeah, d- it's got that new fresh smell to it. It's kind of like, you know, wow. Like, it, it, it's it's kind of like a new car smell. That sort of thing, isn't it? Oh, you want to box this up and say The all new. Oh, what? what? <laughs> yeah, just let people know. Why don't you just make it sound dramatic? <laughs> <laughs> um, 53, 104 for 20 cents or 6, 7, 9, 7, F and 4. We also have uh, a lot of 50 euro vouchers to give away on the show all this week. Uh, the boss has been quite generous uh, to us. So thank you for that. Uh, what what we kind of did this a couple of minutes ago on Facebook Live, but we fucked it up, didn't we? Yeah, we messed it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, but it's well, no, let's not let's not you know talk about our failures. Basically, at the start of every show, we're going to be doing a Facebook Live little video chat mm-hmm. beforehand, usually around eight o'clock. Um, it went out th- tonight, but uh, we were basically we were talking to ourselves for about ten minutes, weren't we? Yeah, we forgot to hit the, the live button. Mm. Which is probably best because there was some content that. But in this way, we're glad it didn't go out. But anyway, I compiled a list of kind of get. Look, people kind of know me, I hope, from doing the show for uh, quite a while. But people don't, maybe don't know John Beryl. No, I'm, a, I'm an enigma, Keith. Johnny B. Beryler. Oh, I don't call me Johnny B. Oh. Any weird nicknames, huh? <laughs> no, I actually don't. I, I was midget for a while because I was very short as a kid. Um, but I was gobshite. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, right. <laughs> so we compiled uh, kind of get get to know you kind of questions for John. Yes. Well, you compiled. I didn't compile. I, yeah, I know. Because I know myself quite well. Yeah. I well, found uh, myself years ago in a Tangineering forest. It was <laughs> but uh, but uh, we, we compiled these. It's kind of like, they're not overly personal, but they, they could be, depending on, on how how you kind of see these things going. I'm if a you know what I mean. open book. Well, there'd be people, li- there would be people listening that would be kind of go, God, that, that man's weird. Because we already talked before that John wears leopard skin socks. Actually, I think I might have them on now. The lucky socks. Mark the occasion. There you go. I shall. <laughs> I'm not going to ask to see the boxes. <laughs> um, okay, so first up, quick off the mark. If you've actually, do you know what? If you've any questions uh, for John, kind of get to know your questions. Text in on 53104 for 20 cent or 6797F104. Um, more embarrassing, the better. Let's, let's be, you know, let's be well, open yeah, look, here. As I said, I'm, I'm a pretty open, open book. book. There's, there's nothing I'm, af- I'm afraid or ashamed to answer. All right, well, but first up, boxers or briefs? <sighs> um, which are the tight ones? What do you mean? Which, well, <laughs> which, ones, which ones are snug fitting? That would be the briefs. Briefs than briefs. That kind of boxers. Yeah. Boxers is too much room for. But that's the whole point. You're supposed to allow the the boxers to, or the the you know what, the jewels to breathe. Uh, no, see the thing with a boxer is, and I've had this discussion with many people before, generally priests. Um, but I was going to say, who have you had this discussion? I with? know you're just down to the local parish. Uh, but with a boxer on a hot sunny day, yeah. you're sticking to yourself. Briefs that doesn't happen. It's all compartmentalized. I know, but imagine taking the briefs off after a long. I don't need so much. I, I wear briefs. Being... Yeah, but it's all compartmentalized. It's like wearing a t-shirt that's slightly tight. It's fine. Yeah, it's a little bit sweaty. Will you wear it again? No, but it's yeah. No briefs all the way. 
Briefs all the way. Okay. S- separate and divide. Someone says on 5104, uh, I love this. Just open it, open up the lines. Uh, any weird fetishes? Any fetishes. We- fetishes. Um, I enjoy uh, being whispered to. Whispered to? What, what do you mean when you're, when, you're, when you're doing stuff? Yeah. Little word of encouragement there every now and again. When you say whisper, do you mean kind of by the person that you're with or do you, do you enjoy someone else coming into the room and just whisper? No, third party. No, Some myself kind of- and the, my, my partner in crime are generally too busy so I need a third party to come in, slightly nibble my lobe and go, you're doing a good job. You're, you, yeah, you, you need a bit of encouragement. Yeah. Yeah. Any weird fetishes? That's a good one. 5 3 one oh four for 20 cents. <laughs> yeah, they know you, John. It's the all new F104 phone show. Uh, so we decided, do you know what? Let's let's embarrass the hell out of John. Uh, cats or dogs, straight off? Cats. Oh, uh, dogs. What's cats or cats? Dicks. I don't what? like cats. Why? You never hear of an old dog lady. It's always like cats are just. Crazy cat lady. Yeah. There is something sinister about a person that only keeps cats, I find. They're very, yeah, isolating. No, I just wouldn't trust them. Do you know what I mean? Shady. They're not very, no, they're not very, uh, they're not very loving people if you have a cat. Because let's face it, cats do what they want. They come in. I wouldn't say they're not loving. Like it's. Well, cats are like a teenager. They come in, they just eat all your food. They'll probably piss on the floor. And then they'll just feck off for two days with no explanation where they are. They're kind of like teenagers. No, I'm not into cats. I find cats very, um, not mysterious. It's shady. Mm. Yeah, they're always up to mischief and they're always fecking But mysterious off. makes them sound kind of sexy. No, they're, they're not mysterious and they're shady. Cats aren't sexy. Like that uncle of yours, they're shady. <laughs> Which one? Uh, do you read on the jacks? Someone says on 52104. Like a book or a magazine? No, that's gross. Doesn't say. I'll, well, I'll whip out my phone though. I won't read a book. I think, I think when it's physical paper, it just it feels grosser to me. Yeah, it can also get a bit messy. Yeah, but the thing is, if you're on the phone while, yeah. you're, while you're on the jacks, it's very, uh, it's very distracting. Oh, you get the, the little red blotches on your knees from sitting there for too long. No. Oh, that's disgusting. No, you know, that's not disgusting. you know when your skin goes red. So look, see the way I'm sitting here now. Mm. So I've got, I've got my uh, elbows. What are you doing? Digging it. I'm just, I'm showing you how I sit in the toilet. Yeah. So I've got my elbows there like that and the phone's John like squatting live on radio. And then you get the red marks from sitting there because I, 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 I told I, you about my mate before, didn't I? Who has to take off his shoes and socks when he's having a shite. For grippage, yeah, no, I, <laughs> I swear to God, I'd love to name him, but I can't. But uh, Freddie Barry Barry, <laughs> you listen. Close. Yeah, that's his name. That's his actual name. Uh, have you ever done a number one in the shower? Which one's a piss? Shit. What? The good one. The 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 less the less disgusting one. I'll go for a wee. Like, um, I have yeah, constantly. But to be constantly, like can just no, like yeah, I, every shower you've been in. Nine out of every ten showers I've ever gone to, yeah, I'd, I'd go for that because it's all running water, so I'm, I'm saving water. Yeah, but people's bare feet had to stand on that. Do no, but it mean? washes down. The only it's, time no, it does, but people's bare feet had to go in afterwards. Yeah, but you'd aim That's for disgusting. the you'd aim for the the, the hole. Yeah, but when you're I'm just not, doing I'm not in going the willy nilly against the glass and stuff. Excuse like, the pun. Uh, age of first kiss. Age of first kiss. I was thirteen. 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 Yep. Yeah. What was what was she or he like? Uh, it was a girl. It was a girl. Yeah, it was a girl, and she was very tooth heavy. That's where I got my my little nibble fetish. Then later on in life, but no, she was she was kind of chewing the lip off you. Yeah, there was a lot of teeth involved, and it was kind of she was licking. You know, you know when you've licked when you've got like sour stuff on your lips, mm-hmm. and you're licking your lips for yeah. and your lips gets really yeah. sore because yeah. it's been over licked. At that time, my lips were afterwards. Yeah. Like, it doesn't happen to me that regularly, to be honest, John. But it has happened. No, when we my lips get really. Well, my kind of my first one was like a. She must have worked for a fucking Dyson or something. She was like a washing machine. Do you know when you put it into? Kind of, oh God, yeah. Sorry for people listening at home, but kind of. Oh, it sounds it was like horrible. you're chewing marbles, but yeah. Yeah, it's kind of. Do you know what? It kind of felt like she was doing a DNA test with her tongue. On it. <laughs> and I failed. That's very good. And I failed. <laughs> uh, a couple of ones coming in on five three one four. Have you ever worn a bra? Thank you for that. Uh, have I ever worn a bra? Yes. I have. Why? Why? I'm looking at John's looking at me going, seriously, how far is this going to go? Um, why, why did you wear a bra? To get attention from my parents. Well, I mean, that would do us. Yeah, that would yeah, do no, us. No, it did do it. Kind no, of the it's... wrong attention, though, wouldn't it? <laughs> no, 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 no nothing, wrong, nothing wrong with it before. Oh, here we go. New show. Conf- I can hear the complaints coming in. Um, but, you know, it would get attention. I got it. No, uh, I, I wore it. I wore it once uh, to get attention from my mom. She was terrible on the phone. So I put on all of her underwear I could find all at once. Your mum's underwear? Yeah, my mum's underwear. I was young. It's fine. I was young. What age were you? Oh, I was only six or seven, I'd say. Oh, just six or seven. Just six or seven or 12. You know, it's maybe 16. Strange question. Did you wear wear her underwear after you? 
like you know, again. Oh man, I don't know. I'm sure I don't know. Yeah, would you wear, why not? Would you wear, wear, I any mothers clothes. out there whose sons wore their underwear? Did you wear? Would you wear it afterwards? Like you know, have you ever? We've had it on the phone show before, where uh, someone has rang up and admitted to wearing their wife's lingerie. And oh, the that's different are, to what I was doing. Keith. It's not really. It's the same yes, thing. It is. It's the same thing. But it, it is. It's effectively the same thing. But. The guy, I always said, anyway, see, the guy was kind of ringing up and saying, yeah, no, I've, I've worn my, my wife's G-string before. Oh, okay. And the first thing that came to mind was, does the wife wear it afterwards? Like, you know, or is that something you have to throw out? I just, or I burn? I, I feel like they're not designed for a man's package. No, they're not, no. But I, I was young, I was young and it was different. I was trying to get attention. I was fully clothed. Did it work? Uh, yeah, she she put the phone right down. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, more more ones coming in. We're getting to know John, John Beryl. Uh, which word do you prefer, jobby or dump? I've never heard of the word jobby. And I assume this is... Jobby, is if that? If you're going for a number two, is it jobby? Well, have I'll you have ever heard of that? I've never heard of jobby, but I did call it. Right, I'm off to do a with jobby. I'm off to do a with dump. Depends the company you're with. If you're if you're meeting, you may meet the spouse's grandparents. Yes. You just go, I'm, I'm just... to do a quick jobby. I'm not going to go to Nana, great aunts, and go like... Yeah, I'm off to do a dump. Mm, I don't know about you. I, I rarely announce when I am. I just tend to go. But, no, I announce. But maybe that's where we're different. Uh, so that's what we're looking for tonight. <laughs> Getting to know your questions. Uh, celebrity crush, someone says. So oh, that's a good Emma one. Stone. Emma Stone. That Who's that? Husky yeah. voice. She's, Who's that? Did you ever see the movie Easy A? Easy what? No. Actually, oh, hang on. She's the one on uh, The Girl on the Train or something to do with a girl no, on the train. No, that's Emily Blunt or oh, something. No, Emma okay. Stone is... Do you know, did you ever see Superbad, yeah? Yeah. You know the girly fancies with the kind of red hair and yeah, that? Yeah, years ago now, I can't remember. Yeah, well, her. She's also in... Oh, yeah, what's that it? great movie? Um, Emma Stone. Uh, Emma Stone. Emma, Emma Stone, yeah, okay, Emma Stone. Here. Let's have a little look. Her. She's oh, that really? movie Ryan Gosling, yeah. A ginger, John. Oh, man, she's beautiful. I didn't see her as a... She's a good-looking girl. Uh, I dated a girl who looked like her, in my mind. But you didn't. No, I didn't date a girl. She was, she, was, <laughs> she was like an uglier cousin, was she? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 53104 for 20 cents to 6797. F104 is the number. Um, we got some uh, 50 euro vouchers to give away on uh, the show tonight. Um, it's pretty simple. Oh, it's I, li- I like this, I must say. This so, one. So we want to give this voucher to you. Uh, I'm going to ask a question. It's a poll. I love a good poll. To dance on and to read out questions from, but uh, a good stripper, a good stripper poll. But uh, there was a there was a poll done. There was a question done, and this came up top as the main thing people do when alone. So when you're alone, mm. when you're by yourself, mm. statistically speaking, who does these statistics? Who's asking these people? Actually, not even that. Who's who's admitting to this? I and mean, I used to knock door to door and do surveys. If people will answer this stuff. Statistically speaking, mm. this is the number one thing that most people will likely do when they're alone. Okay. Is this... I'm making a hand gesture here at John because I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't want to reveal. <laughs> uh, all right, okay, fair enough. Look, we'll leave it open. Statistically speaking. Statistically speaking. What is the number one thing that people do when they're on their own? If you want to win yourself an F-104 goodie bag, you also want to win yourself a 50 euro voucher. That's all you got to do. Text in on 53104 for 20 cents. You get through quicker if you want on 6797 F-104. The main thing people do when they're alone. Yeah, it's a, once you think about it, once you've, once you've gone into your house, you've locked the door behind you. There, there could be people doing it right now. Oh, this, definitely, this. yeah. All right, back after this. It's Dublin Talking, the all-new FM 104 phone show with Keith Ward and John Barrell. FM 104. The all-new FM 104 phone show with Keith Ward and John Barrell. It's got Dublin Talking. FM 104. You're very welcome back. It's the all-new FM 104 phone show with myself, Keith Ward and John Barrell. And um, some, of the, some, of the, uh, some of the guests is coming in are quite interesting. We asked just before the break, you want to win yourself an F-104 goodie bag and a 50 euro voucher, the main thing people do when they're on their own. You guys are shameful. What's this? Oh, Actually, man. sorry, you're shameful for coming up with this statistic, John. I didn't come up with this statistic. I found this statistic on websites that I frequent uh, alone. But so, <laughs> <laughs> do some people cross-dress when they're on their own? Uh, on their own, Kev? I suppose some people do. They might. Yeah. Nothing uh, wrong with it. I'm getting grief here for saying there was something. Right? There wasn't. No, just, no it's, it's, some people do it. Uh, it's not something that every six-year-old child does, but, you know, 2017 now, isn't it? I was, like, I did it when I was six. It was fine. 
It was experimental. Everyone was doing it. It was cool. Every six year. <laughs> I was a superhero. <laughs> right, well, let's open the lines. Uh, who we got here, John, first? Uh, Michaela there first. M- Michaela. Hi, Keith. How are you? How are you, Michaela? What's up? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Good. How was your Christmas? Actually, can we still say... Happy New Year on the third. Oh, I, don't I know. Like I think it's kind of done. Subject. I was back to work yesterday. So. Oh, actually, so was I. I was in yeah. yesterday. And, Were you? Yeah, for the open mic, and it was one of those. Oh. You, you know, look, I love doing the open mic. I do, but it was one of those things. Driving in about half seven this evening, or yesterday evening, going to go. And here we go again. When was it yesterday? Though was it? So on a Monday. Monday was yesterday. Oh, oh, where, where, where? oh, sorry, I'm lost. I thought it was Wednesday. Oh, oh my oh, week that, is off to a terrible start. Oh, that would be good if it was Wednesday. Right? Oh, no. Michaela, what do you do? What do you work at? Um, I work in a reservations department in the Clontarf Castle in Dublin. I, oh, very fancy. Oh, wow, that's a mouthful. Clontarf Castle. <laughs> I was there a couple of weeks ago. I wasn't staying, though. The thing oh, was, wow. I thought Clontarf Castle was an actual castle. I'm sure it used to be, whatever, but it's a hotel now. Yeah, it is. It's the original part of the building is still there, but the, the bedrooms that were built around it. So it's a bit, of, a bit of a mixture, half and half. I was a bit disappointed when I turned up asking for the tour. I was just like, <laughs> where? Where's the tour? What do you mean a bedroom? It's, it's fancy enough. So hang on. So, Michaela, then do you have to deal with, like, people go mental at you? Customers? Oh, yeah. All the time. <laughs> What's the, the job, weirdest though, thing a customer's just, given out to you about? Yeah, what's the the, the weirdest thing that a customer has just got um, you to do? The weirdest thing... God, where do I begin? <laughs> it's, I've worked in a lot of hotels over the years, so I think the weirdest one that I ever got was the fact that they didn't like where we placed our food uh, menus in the bar. Like, what? Kind of stupid what? stuff, but... Where where did it's you put the food menus? A few menus? things that I wouldn't actually say now over the years, to be honest. <laughs> no, but but hold on there a second. Where did, where did you put the food menus? Just like on the bar instead of the tables. <laughs> yeah, but I don't want my food menus on the bar, Michaela. I want them on the table. Oh, see, everyone <laughs> has a different opinion. One of those, one of those, I hate you people. <laughs> she took that very professionally. I was expecting a bit of a fight. Michaela, did you ever, did you ever see the comments on uh, on TripAdvisor? Some of them are just ridiculous. Like, ridiculously picky. Yeah. If you... I was looking up at a hotel recently and I was I was thinking, God, really good reviews. Then there was some gobshite who obviously had nothing better to be doing than just leading a bad review. Basically said, uh, oh, oh, we'd never go back because we're from the UK. I was trying to do a UK accent. I said, no, I, I don't feel fully committed to that. No, um, I can see it in your face. Yeah, man. I was just like, do you know what? Not, not tonight. Uh, yeah. but, but seriously, they, they, uh, your man said, uh, oh, me and my wife are very disappointed. We have, we have a child and we specifically asked them to bring up a cot. When we got to the room, there was no cot. It took oh, them a full 10 minutes to bring a cut up. It's like, Jesus Christ, they brought the cut up in the end. Was your child about to go asleep the minute he got in the room? No, they brought it up. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? You're human 10 beings. 10 minutes is a long time to wait, though, Keith, when I've got a cranky kid. Well, Michaela, you, we're human beings. Do you know what I mean? So, <laughs> don't it, get me exactly. started. Anybody should just give us, cut us a bit of slack. No. Yeah. <laughs> you chose that job. Oh, yeah, I'd be pretty bad at customer service. Okay, we asked we asked this question for uh, an F104 goodie bag and a 50 euro voucher. The main thing people do when they're alone, what is it, Michaela? Actually, first of all, what do you do when you're on your own, Michaela? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, I guess eat because I think eating them when you're on your own is peaceful. <laughs> oh. So I guess that one. So you think sure eat? There's plenty of other things that people do when they're on their own as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, like what? What are you just binging on chocolate or ice cream? What are you doing? Uh, yeah, and watching movies. <laughs> so that's a few. Okay, so you think when people are on their own, the most likely thing they'll do is eat and watch movies. Eat. Any particular food? Is it just generic food or is it like a dirty oh, it's food? it's got to be bad food. No one wants to eat healthy when they're on their own and no one wants to see it. <laughs> oh, I'd often dip a celery now by myself. <laughs> I'm glad you said celery. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Michaela thinks uh, the main thing people do when they're on their own, very uh, very nice, Michaela, I must say. Very, very yeah. gentle. Is it east? Is it east? Ah, you poor chicken, Michaela. <laughs> you poor thing. Innocence, <laughs> innocence, not. Michaela. It's not, though, it's is it? It's not. It's not each. No, it's oh, not. Oh, well. No. Good guess, though. Hang on. <laughs> oh, yeah, go. nice. Well done. I've, I've felt like I, I couldn't just let Michaela away without, no. you know, done that, that is. Okay, so that's what we want tonight. 53104 for 20 cent or 6797F104. What is the main thing people do when they're on their own? I'll give you some of the guesses that are coming in, which may or may not be right or wrong. Yeah. Uh, undress yourself says David well I suppose you have to do that at some stage if you're planning on having a shower or getting down and dirty you have to do it. That's, that's a given now when I walk home when I get in the door straight away I like to strip down I'll mm. take the pants off put on something more comfortable Alan from Kula Alan from take a shower 
says Alan. I don't know about you, uh, Alan, but I tend to take my showers on my own. Yeah, you know take them I mean? for, yeah. I like, don't know what they do in Kulak, but... Uh, <laughs> communal showers, it's all the rage, man. Although, do you know what? That reminds me, I don't know what, is Kulak weird? Remember we were talking to a guy before Christmas who said there was a massive BDSM bonded scene in Blanche. Remember that? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I never knew. If there there's, there's people, there's people, uh, is there people listening to us in Blanche who are sitting down in, in, in a gimp mask and just covered in leather? We're just ready to go for a shower now, yeah. is it? Uh, some people pick their nose, says Susan. Um, I did, well, do you know what the, the horrible thing about that is? They, a lot of people do that in public as well. Oh, people are constantly driving as well. I notice if you're, if you're in traffic, look around the cars next to you. I think, I see, that's kind of a boredom thing. I think. Is it? Yeah, people are stuck in traffic and there's kind of nothing else for them to be doing. I have a question for you, Keith, if you don't mind. Personal question. Oh, I, oh hang on. No, th- th- is this the way it works? Is this? Sorry. I, I just thought it was I, a give and take. I thought, oh, <laughs> I've, you, look, you're the man for give and take. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, what is your question? Wait, do I have to, legally, do I have to answer this? No, well, yeah, it'd be nice if you answered it because everyone's going to ask this question too. Um, everyone picks their nose. Let's all just put our hands up. We've Sometimes, all, we've, yes. all, we've all done it. Like mm. in, the last, in the last fortnight, I think everyone's probably done it at least once. Probably, right? Mm. What do you do once you've picked? Do you pick and flick or are you pick and wipe? Oh, that's you need, disgusting. You need to get rid of it. But, hang on, what are the options again? I feel like I'm on who wants to be a millionaire. Pick and flick or pick and wipe? Without going too much into it, it kind of depends on the texture of it, doesn't it? Oh my God, what do you mean? There are some ones you can't flick, put it that way. There are some ones you, you can't flick. Gloopy. What? What? Gloopy. Let's move on. Uh, <laughs> people play Xbox or PS4, says Cahill. Ah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, 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 that's true, a, but it's not the number one. one thing. Fart, someone says. Well, uh, when you're on your own. Again, one of those things that uh, people should probably do uh, on their own. Fart in the room. Yeah, they don't. Uh, couples who so, fire together, stay together, Keith. That's something that's... Does, I know a lot of couples out there, honestly, that uh, have never done it. Like, they've been together for, say, 15 years and have never passed wind in each other's company. No. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, it's like third date. I'm convinced, I convinced at least 50% of couples have gotten divorced over that. Like, as of 15 years in, your man finally lets one off because he feels comfortable in relation. You're yeah. 15 years in. And that's the end. That's the end of the relationship. No, I think you need to let that off nearly straight away. Well, apparently it can be bad for you, keeping that stuff in. Yeah, it can. It's, it, it is, as they say, it's better out than in, I think. And it's better for your relationship. Like, if you're going to be, if you're smelling constantly, you yeah, need to let her know no. early on. No. This, I, this is my sense. Deal I, with it. I think there's guys out there who would, who would look at their girlfriend or wife in, in a bad light if if it turned out the, you know, <sighs> what imagine, the, imagine this surprise you fart what the, what the hell it happens alright 53104 for 20 cent 6797F104 to win yourself 50 euro vouchers that's all you gotta do we're gonna pop on let us know what you do on your own per innocent Michaela <laughs> eat what the main thing people do on their own what is it 53104 for 20 cent or 6797F104 what says picking your oh, picking oh, your nails, nails. I pick my nails constantly. I, yeah, but it doesn't even just say that. I'm Marie, you filthy woman, picking your nails, looking at yourself in the mirror. So, so hang on. What? So, I picking your nails while looking at yourself in the mirror. Oh, okay. Well, no, I, it's I kind of a vanity. Nails. It's kind of a vanity thing with Marie. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot going on there, Marie. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, Carol in Cabra admits that she picks her nose in traffic. Probably you, I saw Carl yeah. on the way in. At least she's honest. All right, that's all you got to do. Want to win that uh, 50 euro voucher or uh, the F104 goodie bag? 53 104 for 20 cent. A 6797F104. The main thing people do when they're alone, um, and it's not what you think. There's a lot of filthy answers coming in. It's not what you think. It's uh, it's innocent, not quite Michaela innocent, but it's innocent enough. Well, do you want me to give a guess, a clue? Very quickly. Go on. Um, it, can, it can really uh, work yourself up. You can really work yourself up. You can really work yourself into a frenzy doing this. Okay. Very vague, I must say. Mysterious. It's, it's a clue. Like it's not, I'm not going to give the answer. All right, back after this. It gets Dublin talking. The all new FM 104 phone show with Keith Ward. The all new FM 104 phone show with Keith Ward. Different radio for 2017. You're very welcome back. It's the all-new F104 phone show with myself, Keith Ward. Um, you filthy, filthy people. There's some gross texts yeah. coming in. 
I mean, some of the answers that we've read out are gross, but these just take the biscuit. Take the. Oh, even thinking a biscuit sound flicking and. What to say, biscuit? <laughs> what are you talking about? The main thing that people do when they're alone is what? 5 3 104 for 20 cent. Want to win yourself a 50 euro voucher or an FL4 goodie bag? Oh, God, this one's disgusting. Christine. Hi, Christine. Hi, yeah, how are you? How are things, Christine? What are you doing? Um, I'm driving home to the stop with my boyfriend. From the where? We were just out shopping. Oh, I thought you said the doctors. I, I thought you said doctors. the docks. <laughs> we got ourselves a docker. What would you be doing at the docks at this hour? Would you be talking at the docks? Um, sorry, I forgot what Christine said. Where, where are you on the way back from? From Tesco. Oh, ah, just Tesco. shopping, shops. Yeah, yeah, but it's food shopping. It's not fun shopping. <laughs> no, do you no, know what no, I mean? food, food no, is fun. No, in fairness, no. January, good year, new year. Oh, you're into that. New year, new me. I'm going to grab a hashtag. I'm nothing. <laughs> Uh, what, Christine, have you got a kid? No. All right, because I was going to say, if you've got a kid and say if you're in Tesco or anywhere, it works in any supermarket, do what you do. You go just for the crack, just to see the reaction. You go up to the the cash register with, say, a six pack of beer. Right. And a box of nappies. Okay. And then you pretend you don't have enough money for both. So you go and leave the nappies back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the reactions you get, though, are quality, I must say. I can be boyfriend taking off. <laughs> oh, listen. All right, Christine, what do you think it is? Uh, scratching your private parts. Scratching, scratching your, your private, private parts. parts. Do women scratch their private parts? Fuck you. It gets itchy like anywhere else, Keith. Hmm? <laughs> I'd imagine. What do you mean? Like, if you've got itchy anywhere else, you get the itchy. Yeah, I know, but it's not. A, they, don't, they don't have to rearrange themselves. Christine, does your boyfriend... Um, constantly. Yeah, constantly. Constantly, <laughs> Did, is that something I, I, you'd probably just ex- accepted it now at this stage I'm actually going to get an itchy now talking about it uh, I just need to adjust yeah, but like if, if, you're, if you're out in public you're not oh, oh I hate that when like, you've got a scratch in public scratch yourself you know what I mean it's a alright scratch your private parts is something that, uh, it is I suppose it is something that people should at least do uh, in when they're home alone yeah. but like some, an itch will come on you wherever you are mm, I'm not so sure you should do it though uh, Rob you're live in F104 hey Rob Evening, guys. You well? Good, Rob. Bad, Good, Rob. Did Welcome we, back. Did we wake you up, Rob? You can feel you sound a bit sleepy. I, I am. Yeah. Are you alone, Rob? I'm. I'm, I'm in the twilight zone. <laughs> oh, I thought you said I'm in the toilet. Twilight, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time someone sitting on the jacks ringing in the the, the all day after the four phone show. Uh, Rob, what do you think it is that uh, people do when they're on their own? This sounds might this might sound a bit stupid, but are we just sleeping? Now you know what. That's one of those answers. Where it's nearly so, so on the nose and true. It, it nearly makes too much sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, th- th- people sleep, sleep beside each other as well. Yeah. It's very tough to do, though. Mm. But Rob, mostly sleep on your own. You well, it like, well, depends. I mean, Rob, I'm not going to delve too much into your private life. Do you, <laughs> do, do, do you sleep alone, Rob? Depends. Oh, what do you mean, oh, depends? depends? All right. Well, you never see, like, a man and a woman sleeping exactly at the same time. Yes, you do. Yes, you do, don't you? Hold on, what, how are you How are you seeing people? Are you watching through windows, Rob? Oh, <laughs> Any couples uh, I've seen. <laughs> you do, of course I you do. I have a mirror on the ceiling. Oh, right, I see. <laughs> Rotating bed too on the ceiling, yeah. You're not Prince, are you, Rob? <laughs> oh, I wouldn't mind. Wouldn't mind that that room, he's gone now. Uh, remember that rumour that went around about... Like, it's a yeah. well-known rumour, so I don't think it's that disrespectful to say that he got a... He got a rib removed. Oh, that was Marilyn Manson, wasn't it? No, I thought it was Prince? Prince. Yeah, he got a rib removed so he could do stuff. So he could oh, be like a dog. Yeah. Yes, like a dog. Thank like you. a dog, yeah, there you go. He's so not so. the only one that done that either. You, oh, who else? There's other ones. I, I just can't think about how did that done. Me mate, Frank. Yeah. Uh, in America, it's big. Probably, probably best. You, you I don't, don't think it works. I don't think that would work if you lost a rib. I think it's to do, you need a longer spine. You need something. <laughs> you need something longer, yeah. Thanks, Rob. Well, it depends. If, you're, <laughs> if you sleep alone, depends. All right, Rob, you think it's sleep that uh, yeah. a lot of people do on their own. It's not sleep, is it, John? I don't it's think it not is. sleep. No. It's not sleep, no. But, Rob, you can go back asleep now because you sound very sleepy. Oh, had a, thanks Rob's had a, hard, he's had a hard Christmas. Yeah, it's been tough on him. Not yeah. a break. 5-3, uh, 104 for 20 cents. A couple of minutes left in this. I'm going to win yourself a 50-euro voucher and an F104 goodie bag. Uh, the main thing people do when they are on their own. Uh, Debbie. Hiya, Debbie. Hi, how's it going? How are things, Debbie? You're on the all-new F104 phone show. <laughs> Not too bad. How are you guys? Good. Oh, where, where, good. You, where, where are you on the way back from? Um, to be honest, the Gazy Panto. <laughs> the Gazy oh, Panto. Well, very, I didn't know that was still going on. Don't, like, finished. don't like Pantos. You're not a fan of Pantos. <laughs> nah. <laughs> oh, yes, you are. Did you bring, Debbie, did you bring, a, did you bring a, a kid with you? A child with you? 
No, we actually go as a family every year. Um, I've got a nephew who's about 10 years old, so we tend to go with him. But it's myself, my husband, uh, my sister-in-law, her nephew, and um, my husband's parents. Oh my God, that's everyone. Anyone yeah. you were related to, you bring along. I have a question. Sorry? I have a question. Why Why are pantos always camp? If you know what I mean. They're always I camp. This one was quite camp, to be honest. Robin Hood and his merry men. So it was quite camp to say that. Yeah, that would be, wouldn't it? Robin Hood, he loves his merry man, he does. But do you know what I mean? It's all it's always very kind of tongue in cheek, like, oh hello, or that's not what she said to the vicar to you know. Well, that's the fun of it. Yeah, that's but not with every it. single panto goes it goes along. That's why it's a panto. If it was anything else, it'd be a dramatic play. I just don't I just don't understand why it has to be camp. That's what I'm that's saying. That's the panto thing. I don't know. Running around naked, someone says. Oh. <laughs> well maybe not running, but walking around right naked. Alright, uh Debbie, what do you think it is? Something I do quite often on my own, dance. Dance? Yeah, dance. So when you come in, come home from a night out or come home just from work, you close the doors behind you and you have a little bit of a boogie, is it? Uh, yeah, blare the music and just have a little boogie. Yeah, definitely. Bit of a boogie. No bit one has said boogie. that since like 1982, John. <laughs> bit of a boogie. You sound like my mom when she goes, did you have a good time at the disco last night? The discotheque. The discotheque, yeah. <laughs> It's a legitimate word. Uh, someone says, I clean the house uh, naked, uh, Mary says in Mullingar. It depends what you're cleaning with. You don't want to be bleaching the floors with, with, your, with your bits. Mopping with hot water. Yeah. yeah, that's dangerous. Although we had someone on before. Do you remember who cooks in the kitchen naked? Oh, oh yeah. You have Imagine. to watch for splashback. Or if you're making a coddle. You, know, you don't want to get confused with the, the sausage in the coddle. Come and, on. And you're, no, you could. Seriously. It looks, how, how, how does your... What? When you look, when you look at the... the the coddle sausage, is that the yeah. name? Probably the name. Coddle sausage, yeah. When you look at that, right. do you not see anything other than, you know what? I, do, I couldn't, I can't abide by it. I just cannot eat a coddle. Well, I'll tell you what the main difference is between a coddle sausage and uh, yourself. Because it looks like a penis, seriously. Yeah, I'll tell you the main difference, though. Go on. One's not attached to you, Keith. Put that one in the stew. <laughs> Very true, but I'm just saying, when, you know, you're preparing oh, In the heat of the moment, yeah, when you're just you, chopping everything. Yeah, while you're naked. Yeah, in the heat of the moment, you could, you know. You might. Uh, so, Debbie thought dancing was the main thing you do by yourself. It's not. Um, I think I'll have to put people out of their misery, will I? I think so. Or do we have, hang on, I think we have Tracy coming as well, who, uh, to be honest, Tracy is a little filthy, so and so. Uh, someone said, Vaughn says East as well. East, well, people like to East with other people as well. Depends. You know, but in, yeah, in you know, so we had eat, sleep, dance, eat, sleep, brave, repeat. Um, <laughs> Very innocent answers. Yeah, no one, no one is there. Uh, well, we see, we can't put some of the, the the horrible ones in. What's Tracy there on line? No, it's, uh, it's what? The, what? It's what the stuff the other half won't watch from either. Oh, I see. Uh, I see. Like if you oh, have like a, you're catching up on Netflix yeah, series, yeah, something like that, yeah. or porn. Uh, Tracy, hi, Tracy. Hi, yeah. You're right, Tracy. How are things, Tracy? What are you doing? Good. What are you doing? It's doing good, Keith. You're not listening. Yeah, I know, but what, what are you doing? I'm up in bed watching Teddy. Are oh, you up in bed? Are you oh, on your own in bed, Tracy? But you're a bit like Rob. Do you know what we should do? We should, should match Rob and Tracy up together so they can oh. sleep with each other. Oh. See if they doze off at the same time. <laughs> do you have a good Christmas, Tracy? Yeah, it was quiet. Yeah, that's why I like it. Quite nice, nice and quiet and yeah. drunk. Nice and quiet and drunk. <laughs> uh, all right, Tracy, what, what do you do uh, when you're... I'm afraid to ask now. What do you do when you're on your own? Well, I like... <laughs> uh, I take off all my clothes. Run right. around the house. Run around the house. How big is your house, Tracy? It's big. <laughs> so you run... Why is that, Tracy? You just feel free, is it? Yeah. Run around, mate. Get in the nip. Oh, the whole lot. It's not even just down to yeah. underwear. It's the whole lot. <laughs> the socks and all, Tracy. Oh, yeah. And have you ever been caught doing it? Have you ever been caught doing it? No, because I live in Yellow. <laughs> I know, but the neighbours, I don't know. You imagine if you just walk past Tracy's house and there she is running no, around no, naked. The are always closed. All oh, right. Yeah. You do prep before you come in, Tracy. Do you come in and, you know, close the curtains, close the windows? Or do you just go straight in and just whip everything off? No, walk in, close the windows, close the curtains. So it's preempted, like when you said, does she do prep? I thought what you meant was like, does she not just Tracy, but stretches in general. and stuff? No, uh, kind of like. Uh, not ladyscaping, manscaping, that sort of thing. I thought that's what you meant. Yeah, some prep. So yeah, do you shave down before you go for a run? Well, yeah. Runners do it. <laughs> runners do. Well, Cyclists it's more, it's do it. It's more aerodynamic. I don't know if yeah. they bother going down there, but they certainly need their legs and their head. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're going to run around naked, you need to. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Well, uh, 
it, I don't think it is the answer, Tracy, but it's probably the best one we've gotten so far. <laughs> it's the best one. <laughs> are, are you, are you na- you're not naked now on the phone, Tracy, are you? I am. Gosh. <laughs> you can tell. She's got a little bit of devilment in her voice, isn't she? Uh, Tracy, we, it's not the right answer. We're going to give you a goodie bag. We'll give you, oh, it's not the right answer. Um, I'll, we'll save the 50 euro for the end of the show because no one's got it. I'll put you all out of your misery. The answer is, the main thing people do when they're alone is win arguments. They'll think about arguments yeah, they've had. Yeah. <laughs> oh, like, oh, you mean, you know, go, ah, damn it, I should have said that. Yeah, should have said this, should have yeah, said that. Yeah. It's the main thing people do. So, uh, look, Tracy, as I said, we'll give you a goodie bag. At the end of the show, I've got a game in mind, Keith. Yeah. Um, Tracy, you can play it if you want. Uh, feel yeah. free to call in later on. I like this game because it sounds sexy. Yeah, it's it's yeah, called Guess the Sex, Tracy, and we'll play that. And if people get if people get that game right, they'll uh, win the 50 euro. Guess the sex. Guess the sex. Guess so, the yeah, sex. Right. It's not it's not as X rated as people might think. No, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice fun game for all yeah. the family. All right, well, listen, Tracy, we'll leave you to it. Um, whatever you're right. up to, do you know, it's a bit cold though. It's a bit nippy tonight, so just, just have the heat yeah, on. Yeah, turn an electric blanket on. I'd hate I'd hate for Tracy to get a cold. <laughs> listen to us oh, naked. God, I wouldn't want that. Have one of you beside me then. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, Tracy, wait till the show's over. We'll see. <laughs> Myself and John be around after the show. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Tracy, good luck and a uh, happy new year. Uh, there you go. I think it, I'm not sure if it's the first ever time someone's talked to me on the phone completely starkers, but uh, it doesn't happen often. It's the first time I've been offered a threesome, though. So there you go. Oh well, unfortunately, that has happened. Welcome, to, actually, <laughs> welcome to the show. It has, yeah, yeah. My, myself and Chris. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so welcome to the show, John. You'll you, you'll enjoy yourself. Yeah. Oh, well, settle in. Uh, the, the all new F and Four phone show. Uh, where uh, threesomes are free. Yeah. Imagine putting that on the. We got t-shirts done. But, uh, yeah, get that. Can we get that on both lads? Yeah. 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 Can we sort that out, lads? Can we? Yeah. Anyway, 53104 for 20 cent or 6797F104 is the number. Uh, coming up next, we'll be talking uh, to, I uh, mentioned this at the start of the show, um, a man named uh, Gary Dargan. Um, you may have seen this story all over the Irish Sun over Christmas. A really harrowing, heartbreaking uh, story. And uh, he's going to be telling us uh, what happened uh, in 2014. He was sitting in the kitchen of his Tala home. An absolute madness broke out. Coming up next. It gets Dublin talking. The all new FM 104 phone show with Keith Ward. The all new FM 104 phone show with Keith Ward. Different for 2017. You're very welcome back. It's the all new F104 phone show with myself, uh, Keith. 53104 for 20 cent or 697F104. Uh, as I said just there before the break, you may have seen this story uh, in the Irish Sun over the Christmas. Um, it certainly caught our attention. Um, it was basically uh, the story of Gary Dargan. Um, he witnessed um, horrible absolute horrible terrible uh, crime that happened uh, in his own kitchen um, his poor mother was shot dead by it's only one way to say it um, a mentally ill man called James Redmond who broke into his neighbour's home in Tala and shot dead Mary Dargan uh, on in front of her family um, he also shot and seriously injured her daughter Karina but thankfully she survived own depictions of Mary's son Gary, the whole family could have been slaughtered. James Redmond was not found uh, was found not guilty by reason of insanity. And incredibly, this was we couldn't believe that you know this actually happened. How often does this happen? He could be released next month when his case comes up for review. And uh, Mary's son uh, Gary joins us live in the studio to tell us more. Uh, Gary, you're very welcome to the phone show. Thank you, thank you very much, Keith. Um, there's no there's no easy way to kind of start. Take us back to. Take us back to uh, 2014 and kind of what happened. It was, okay. a nor- it was a normal day, I assume. It was a normal day. It was, um, yeah, it was just a normal day. There was nothing, that, you know, the weather was, the weather was well. Everybody was, everybody was in good form, you know. Mm. And, uh, yeah. I mean, you, you were planning your, your sister's hen party, is that correct? Yeah, my yeah. Sister, you know, actually, I want to go a little before that. Yeah. I mean, maybe to just give you a little bit of a flavour of my mother, like, you know. Yeah. My ma was, uh, she was a very, you know, a warm person, you know, and mm. I was over in England for a little bit. I was over there for, I was over there for um, maybe eight years. Mm. And uh, so I came back in the January and I was back home with my mother. And I was in her house, you know, just before you get settled back into Dublin and yeah. get fixed. Anyway, uh, on a uh, on 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 a um, just going out into the, uh, I remember sitting in the back garden with my mother. Yeah, 
and we were, you know, just talking. And the neighbour Redmond stormed over his over his uh, over his kitchen. This is James Redmond. This is James yeah. Redmond. Yeah, but this is a, a week before mm. this actually took place. You know, about the seventh or whatever. And I looked at my mother. I was like, "What's going on over there?" And she just shrugged her shoulder and says, "Well, I don't know." So I was like, "Okay, that's a bit strange." Mm. So we thought nothing of it, you know. And was this this guy James Remmel, which we'll talk about in a few minutes? Yeah. Was he um, was he kind of known to your family, or was he known in the area? He was known to the family because he was ex- next door neighbor. And right. uh, but was he known in the area as kind of maybe a, a kind of volatile sort of guy? Is no, that no, not like that at all. But he always, I always had that sense. There's something about this guy. Do you know what I mean? You know when you see somebody, you got the guy is just too quiet. Yeah. So uh, I just always, I just there was always something sense. There was always a sense that there was something dangerous about this guy. Mm. He was always head down, never make eye contact, but he'd know all your business. Do you know one of these people? Mm. So I was like, okay. But uh, I don't know, I just I always felt very, very uh, unsure about this guy. And this guy, uh, James Redmond, he, what was, what is he, he's in the 60s, early 60s? Yeah, I, think he was in his, I think he was in the 60s or the yeah. late 50s on the day. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, my mother, she didn't even think too much about him. She's like, he's all right. She didn't like his wife, actually, to be honest with you. Mm. She says, he's a bit dodgy, but he's all right for some reason. He was always, he was always giving her compliments, you know. Oh, Mary, you know, you have a lovely family, this, this, mm. this. And me and I was like, Jesus, he's always complimenting, complimenting me mm. on my family. And I was like, okay, that's very strange. Why is he doing that? That type of thing. So take us then, so first of all, you would know, you would know, um, you had no idea that this was anything nothing. was I had no, you know, clue, nothing, no warning friend. yeah nothing there was no warning there was no uh, there was no argument there was nothing yeah. for there was no there was no tension mm. that we knew of and that my mother knew of my family knew of mm. you know so we were just uh, you know just living the life you know and mm. and on the day well we all know what happened well, tell, tell us for maybe people who didn't read the the article in the, in the Irish Sun. Okay, or, you know, feel free to go as as, yeah. as in depth or, or not as, as you want. Because I, I would imagine it would look when when we read this in the Irish Sun uh, a couple of days ago. Yeah. Oh, uh, we by the way, I'd like to just I'd like to uh, thank Stephen Brain yeah. and the Irish Sun mm. for running the story. Mm. When we read this uh, a couple of days ago. Yeah. I was I was shocked that first of all that you or your family had to witness this, but also yeah. I think everyone maybe reading it probably was thinking, what would I do in that situation? So yeah. James Redmond literally broke into your house. Yeah. What ran into the into the kitchen where? Well, everyone what was. It was yeah, I was in the um the, my my sisters, I mean mother, they were in the kitchen, mm. and they was discussing. That's Karina, Jesse, my mother, and there was three uh three grandchildren my yeah. mother's grandchildren in the house as well they were running you know running in the house kids too so uh yeah so uh so yeah so uh, they were talking about jesse's wedding yeah in the summer and they were actually talking about the hens night and what they're gonna do and this this mm. this so i was like okay cool so i was watching the rugby next door in the sorry in the next room mm. and uh I was going back in and forward, or I was coming in and out. Anyway, I got a cup of coffee and I, I gave my mother the thumbs up, you know. Everything all right, Matt? She looked at me, go on. Anyway, I went into the, um, into the, uh, into the sitting room and watched the, uh, the, the rest of the game. Mm. And uh, I'm just sitting there, just relaxed. And all of a sudden I hear a massive loud bang, bang. My instinct was, what is that? Yeah, you would. Yeah. You know, so directly after that, I mean, you're talking about seconds, sec- no, yeah. not even seconds, just milliseconds. Yeah. I had the gasp of terror from my sisters. My instinct is this is not good. Mm. Something's happened. So I'm jumping up off the, uh, off the, um, off the chair. I'm tearing the door open, and as I'm getting to that stage, I hear another bang. Mm. So I'm just seeing the kids running out the hall, two kids, and uh, so I'm looking up to the hall, yeah. and I see, I see my sister, Karina, on the deck, and I see smoke, mm. 
And I just, the instinct was to get in there as quick as I possibly can. I felt there was somebody in there. Do you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Cause I felt there was someone and I shouldn't be in there. You know what I'm saying? But this is happening so fast. You're just, it's, you're not even processing. You don't even you know, know what to yeah, do. You're just yeah. like, you're completely yeah. confused. Mm. So anyway, I jumped, I ran up the hall and I jumped over Karina and, uh, yeah, I seen this this neighbor next door with the rifle. Mm. Uh, did uh, you re did you win did you recognize him straight away? One hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. No, what I mean, I, you know, you recognized him as your neighbor. Oh ah, yeah, I, yeah. I was told. I just I looked at the guy. I was like, yeah. What's going on here? Like you know. Mm. So uh, his eyes popped out of his head when he seen me. He had the gun broke. So he wasn't expecting to see it. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't think I was there. Yeah. Anyway, he had the gun broke and there's two cartridges out of, and he was chasing two bullets into the um into the uh into the barrels. Yeah. And I looked anyway, I looked at him. I looked at my sister Jessie and she had her son. She was trying to save her son. Mm -hmm. So she had him over the shoulder and she was making her way out the back the back garden. And uh but she didn't know, she she didn't even see me there. Mm. So she was assuming that she was going to get destroyed out the back, you know, by this people, this person, I mean. So anyway, uh, um, yeah, so. At that stage, first of all, at that stage, what are you thinking? And second of all, what did you do? It, uh, this yeah, well, is what I was saying when I read this article, um, Gary, I was thinking, God, I, I, I might freeze. Do you know what I mean? I might actually freeze and do nothing. Totally. Yeah, I understand that. You know, if, unfortunately, we have no matter how tightly drilled you are. Yeah, you just don't know what you're going to do in this kind of mm. scenario. So, so yeah. So I took and then I see my mother and I knew she was. You know, I I knew she was shot. Yeah. And then I looked at him, and he he just looked at me and he had that he had the look of shock. Yeah, because he wasn't expecting he, to see it. Yeah, yeah, he actually had the look of his expressions yeah. changed on his face. And then he looked down at it and just, and I just crashed the right hand down on him. Mm. At that point, he just, he fell, mm. you know, he, he was knocked out. So, uh, so then my attention went to my mother. Mm. And, uh, I knew she was gone. Yeah, you know, I kind of knew looked, straight away. I knew she was gone. Cause she was she was falled over at that stage, and then at that point you're just like you can imagine the territory under our skin is just going <sighs> all the fuses light up, you know. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So James Redmond kind of lay then on uh, the the floor of your kitchen, having yeah. done what he what he did. Can you remember the next few minutes? Yeah, yeah. Or well, where you just come this uh, panic mode? It wasn't panic. It was actually. I don't know what it was. It was like I was trying to process what was happening here in real time. And mm. I knew I knew the solemnity. I knew the high seriousness of it all, you know. And I was thinking to myself, is this real? You know, mm. because the shockwaves that's just, the bolts of shockwaves that's running through your body is like, what the fuck is happening here? Mm. So anyway, um, yeah, so... I went, I went to work on him, you know, I'm not going to lie, I did. Mm. Um, yeah, of course you would, out of yeah. absolute anger, yeah. So, uh, but then a moment of clarity came through when I see my sister, Jessie, coming back through, through the door, the mm. back door, and she hadn't got her son with her, so she put the son over the wall to a neighbour, and then she came back through because she realised I was, I was in the kitchen and I had... Mm had him down so I, t I asked Jesse, Jesse I asked her to go out to the front I didn't want to see her mother like that you know Yeah. so I um, I did and then at that point I picked up Redmond and I I cast him into the hall I threw him into the hall and I threw the the rifle into the hall and uh, and then I went back in to my mother and again, I was, is this really happening? And then I said to me, Ma, I said, go. I knew she was gone, but I just said, go. 
you know, my father's passed away a little while, a couple of years, you know, 20 mm -hmm. years, whatever. But I wanted the tour, I says, man, you go, go to heaven. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. So, I did that. And then I turned around and I was looked over my shoulder and I seen Redmond standing again. And I says, okay. So, I kicked him hmm. to the ground. And at, at, at any point, uh, Gary, did he did he say anything? Like, when he got back up, did he say anything or, you know? Yeah, he was just coming out with a lot of nonsense. Just babbling, yeah. mad stuff. It was, it was, he knew what he was doing. He wasn't mad. He knew exactly what he was doing. Hmm. And uh, he just, I was dragging him down through the hall. I wanted to get him out of the house, you know? Yeah. And uh, shortly after that, a couple of neighbours ran in, but, you know, whatever. Yeah, the guards were not. The guards, the guards were, I mean, the guards on the day, they were very, I was actually surprised how quickly they got there. Yeah. I had him, he was under my feet, he was suffocating under my feet. But uh, I looked and I seen the guard, how did they get, you know, it was one of those. Yeah, how did they get there real. so fast, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, in fairness, they did their job, you know? Yeah. And um, so, uh, yeah. When, afterwards, when, um, afterwards, when, when James Redmond was obviously arrested and, and taken away. Yeah. And then he subsequently, you know, later on you found out he was found not guilty by reason yeah. of insanity. Yeah. Um, they basically said he's innocent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, are you having a laugh? Do you believe that, um, I mean, I, I said there, you know, what was he talking mad stuff? And you kind of correct me and said, no, no, he wasn't, he wasn't talking he was mad stuff. He, knew, he, was he knew exactly what he was he doing. He knew everything. He knew exactly what he was doing. And here's the thing. Here he is now up there and he's given, like, he got a lot of attention from the state. They give him all the love and all this, 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 mm. this. Nobody knocked on our door, you know? We had a little nun from the from the uh, parish. She'd knock up now and again, but nobody from the state. Yeah. Was just like, why was the problem? So you so you just why was the problem? Yeah. You know? He was, the, he was the patient. He was referred to as the patient in court. Yeah. Before the, before the trial. Hmm. During the trial, I should say. Excuse me. So he was nearly... I suppose in your mind and I suppose your family's mind he was nearly the victim being portrayed well as he victim. is the victim in the eyes of the state we were not we, I mean for me um, for me the fact that I took him down that is the problem for the state do you understand what I mean what I mean is um, so hang on so what because you because you tackled him because you knocked him out because yeah, it's easier it would be a lot easier for the state um, if he had a wipe us out and nobody and everybody else, ah, he's just mad and that's it. And it's ridiculous. Good night, yeah. God bless. You know, it's it's cruel. It's disgusting. It's everything that, it's it's just a complete, okay, this guy, right? He has uh, every, whatever it is, six months, He's uh, he goes up, uh, goes up in front of a board or whatever. Like a review or something. A review yeah. panel, yeah. Mm. And uh, well, that has me on high alert, you know, because I'm thinking to myself, I visualized him. I seen him do what he do, trying to do what he did, mm. like jumping over that wall mm. with the intention of wiping everybody out. And he had all the bullets on him, you know. He had the, and they're going to say to me, he's not going to do that again. He's uh, he's reformed. He's, he, you know, come on, what kind of? You don't believe that? No, <laughs> I mean, Gary, do you think he? Do you think he kind of meticulously planned uh, what he did uh, to your Absolutely. to your mom and your family? Absolutely. So it wasn't just like a split second, like no. he just That's you know nonsense. Yeah. No. He knew exactly what he was doing, and he picked this timing. Yeah. He was always yeah. watching. He was always watching outside that outside of his uh, outside, or sorry in his living room, watching mm. through the cords. You know all these people. Mm. And uh, yeah, he probably was. Probably was uh, I don't know, but. The facts are he was he was planning it, yeah. In these sorts of situations, um, is there any uh, is there any ever reason or excuse given uh, that maybe he gave or in general that, that why he carried out this act, or is it just because oh well you know he, he's pleaded uh, you know to insanity, but or did he give you any excuse maybe in court of why he planned it, why he carried it out? Lies. Hmm. It was lies. We went in and he said, my mother said this, this, this. I read it and it's in the Irish Sun. It sounds very delusional, you have to say the least. 
Yeah, but you have to think about it. You have to think. You have to break this down. What else is he going to say? Yeah. What else is he going to say? Mm -hmm. He's going to come out with a lot of lies. Mm. You know, the doctor said he's not mad. He's he's like, why do they have him mm. in a mental institution? So the, his case comes up um, for review uh, in a couple of months' time. Yeah. It's it's possible. I don't know how likely it is. Do you know? It, but it is possible that he could get out. Well, why wouldn't he? He's mm. not. He's not. Uh, he's uh, in the eyes of the state. He's uh, he had a episode, and now he's fine. An episode. You know, Except that's the way they put it to us. See, I think the I mean, look. We've done it. We've done it before on 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 the phone show with you know lots of uh, different cases. None as serious as this, no. but we've done lots of cases where it mm. seems like you know. People go with the, the law, goes with a letter of the law. That's yeah. it. This guy's a victim. But no. you're, you're sitting in front of me here yeah. as an actual person. I can see even when I was asking what happened that you're visualizing the whole lot. Ah, yeah. And you're telling me if you hadn't have disarmed uh, this guy, he, first of all, he would have slaughtered everyone there. Definitely and, he, and dogmatically. Yeah, but it would have been easier for the state. 100%. If you hadn't done nothing. It would have been easier for the state if we were all murdered. Yeah, a lot easier. Because they wouldn't have to put up with me. I'm the protagonist. Yeah. I am the problem. I wasn't recognised. Mm. I've been sitting in my house for maybe two and a half years now. Two, but coming up the tree, mm. nobody said that to me. When I was four, this is my first interview. Mm. Are you Stephen Brain pursued me? Yeah, from the sun. Are you in? Um, are you in? The, you're in the same house. Yes, absolutely. How difficult is that when you walk into the kitchen every every day? You know, it's not that difficult. Do you know why? Because my mother's strength dominates the situation because she was a very spiritual woman, you know. Mm. She was God fearing, you know. And uh I know she's there, you know, I know she's in the kingdom of heaven. Mm. I don't have to you know, it some it's hard for me to explain that, you know. There's no uh, anxiety. You know, it's mm. it's our family home. And it is what it is. You we will not be milled from that. You know what I mean? And did you mention, you may have mentioned that James Redmond, he had a wife, did he? Right. He had a wife, yeah, he uh, had a wife and a couple of kids, whatever. And are they still your next door neighbours? No, are they still in the area? I don't know, yeah. they're, whatever they're going, you know. Because, I mean... They no, ran like rats, you know. Yeah. I mean, obviously, look, it's a difficult situation for them as well, but I think that's the last thing you need as well. Uh, listen, they could have prevented this. Yeah, you think so? 100%, man. You yeah. don't, 100, when the truth comes in, they'll all come out in the wash. Mm. You, there's no such thing as instant coffee. You don't yeah. just do this. Come on. Yes. Come on. Let's talk common sense here. Hmm. Everybody wants to say, oh, this, this, this. Well, come on. Let's, let's strip everything back and just let's talk common sense here. Hmm. How, do you, how do you park the anger that I assume you, you I have towards us? I have it. Yeah. Still, you. Oh, it's there, mate. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't give my pain to nobody. It's, it's mine and I... But it kind, of, feel, it, it, it it kind of feels like... That anger and pain. If 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 James Redmond had been convicted and found guilty yeah. and locked up for twenty years, yeah. okay, of course it, it doesn't change it doesn't anything, change but anything. it probably gives you a little bit of you know I'm peace. Also, I'm maybe on, yeah, you're right. I'm yeah. on alert at the moment and I'm yeah. watching. So I'm actually on duty if that makes sense because yeah. I'm ready because the state is about. To, it's like the doctors are saying, "Now, Mister Dargan, any day now we could let him out. You're mm. under our control. We have you in bondage." Mm. I'm like, excuse me, okay, you're wonderful, aren't you, you know, coming out with a big spiel about mental health, mm. give me a break. <laughs> Look, I'm not talking about people, I know no. people have episodes, yeah. and genuine people out there that have, you know, they have the few kinks, they're a little bit, you know. No, absolutely, and we talk. wrong with yeah. these people, but to yeah. say that these people are potential murderers, bullshit, no chance. These people, these are psychopaths, mm. and they're just put amongst the real people that have a few issues, no problem with these people. Yeah. But this, no. I have to separate these people. Absolutely. Well, you know, we've talked about mental health so many times, it's yeah. everywhere. Yeah. This, th this to me, um, Gary, doesn't sound like, you know, just like you're running a mill. No. This is psychopathic, as you said. This is, this is heinous, yeah. Mm. Finally, tell us, tell us what sort of a, you know, because I suppose I'm guilty of it, the media are guilty of it, and that's just that maybe the state are focusing in on James Redmond because he's, yeah. I suppose, such a psychotic guy, but I suppose what's what's been missed in all this is your mum. Yeah, my mum, yeah. What's, well, what sort of woman was she? She was wonderful. She was she was amazing. She was she was a heart of gold. She was warm. She was the, I mean, mostly, like, 
a genuine Dublin woman like you know you could mm. always ring her when you're uh, when you want to have a chat it's like oh, alright what are you up to oh, I'm doing this are you okay that type of thing like you know mm. um, but nobody thinks about my mother the, her mental health on that day you know yeah what about what she had to experience this and the victims mm. and your family yeah they were witnesses nobody's, yeah. nobody's saying ah here what about your mental health and what about yeah. your sister's mental health your brother's mental health myself mm. you know the, the children and well, well, firstly, okay, I understand. Some people say we have good, uh, you know, good chemicals in the brain and this, this, this. But to be honest with you, you know, it's a bit. You're looking and you're saying, I'm just sitting up in the house there sometimes, and I think to myself, what are you all talking about? You know what I mean? Yeah, I think it's all it's all well and good, I suppose, to be using uh, fancy phrases when it comes to mental health. And obviously, as you said yourself, Gary, sometimes it applies normal yeah, stuff, but no problem with that. It certainly sometimes seems like bullshit. This is, this when, is bullshit. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah. bullshit on. talk. Come on. Yeah. Once you cross that line, you can't come back. Yeah. There's a major goal. To say that you can put these type of personalities back in amongst the community, mm. come on. What? And then having everybody... And it actually, it's actually normalising this. Oh, okay. Yes, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing it all the time now. Another yeah. one. Oh, here we go. Some fella goes crazy, kills this, this, this. Mm. With a knife, or I'm like, oh, come on, what's going on here? Like, you know? We, and um, I suppose we've come across uh, stories uh, in the past as well of um, family members. Maybe the dad has taken his own life and, and, and the kids and, yeah. and stuff like that, and the yeah. kids and, and the wife. And when we've talked about it before oh, on the phone heavy. show, a lot yeah. of those, a lot of those uh, men that carry out those acts, and it mainly is men, but I suppose some women as well, a lot of them get uh, sympathy, a lot of sympathy. Would they have any sympathy from, from you? Zero. Yeah. They'd have the opposite of sympathy yeah. you know no no never um I would be kind of asking people what kind of what's running through people's heads when they have sympathy for these people mm. you know you know what I mean how would you how can you have sympathy for mm. like I don't, you know I, Gary I, I, I honestly I, I kind of tend to agree uh, with you when it comes like to so much positive uh, conversations around mental health, yeah, you know, so much positive. That, yeah. But I think you're right. There has to come a time where you go, right? Here is a positive conversation about yeah. mental health about yeah. someone who's gone through a bit of difficult time. No problem. And here is someone who may or may not be mentally ill, but it doesn't matter. He still killed someone. Yeah. And he, w if he had the opportunity, if you hadn't been there, he would have killed everyone else. One hundred percent. But some people give these people sympathy. Some people do, like normal Joe Soaps. Yeah, look, you know what I mean? Some people are stupid. That's the way yeah. life is, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Or maybe at least their sympathy seems to be maybe misplaced. If uh, Gary, if you're out and about walking around Tallaght or wherever, yeah, and you you spot James Redmond, yeah, well, just that's an act of nature, then, isn't it? You know, I just do a. That's just I, you do what, how can yeah. what, I mean? What mm. I've experienced. Come on, yeah. What am I meant to do? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Are you prepared if, if that is the case then? To well, I'm sure the state will have me in bondage then. You know. Yeah. Well, they would. I suppose of they course would, they yeah. would. Mm. Of course they would. Anyway, what do you do with this? What, what am I supposed to, you know? Anyway, I don't have to go behind tickling the bricks and saying I'm going to do this. And I had a few people saying, oh, this and Gary, I've done this and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I just pat them on the head now. Like, you know, I had, when I was, when I was forced to trauma and I, st I had to listen to this crap all the time, you know? Mm. But uh, ah, that's another story anyway. But the Redmond, yeah, he's just a, he's just a, He's a devil. He's a serpent, and he's he's going only one place, and that's down below. You know. Yeah. I think, honestly, I think your anger is uh, completely understandable. A lot of people texting in at five two one zero four. My heart is breaking for that man, Gary. Uh, the justice system in Ireland is complete and utter joke. Uh, criminals are getting protected instead of victims of these scumbags. The murderer James Redmond should not be allowed out for what he done. Uh, if that happened to my mom, uh, the killer would be dead by my own hands. Uh, Another person, the Irish justice system should be more like the American uh, justice system, which I, I would imagine. Which you're, look, you're locked so. up for life in, in, in America, yeah. Life. And there's not as much. Bring back the death penalty. I have mm. no problem with that, you know. Mm. Do you think? Do you think? Uh, funny, uh, Gary. Do you think there will ever be a time that you can? You'll never. I don't think you'll never move on. Of course, but kind of maybe. I mean, there's a lot of anger still running through you. Even though, you know, do you think there's ever going to be a time when that anger subsides? Never. Never, because uh, it's my mother and I love her. I love her and I will never stop. You know, it's, okay, how can you? You know, how can you? Mm. Um, I'd be, it'd be, 
I, look, uh, okay, I feel there's love. You, you see the anger here, you see the tension, you see all this, okay? Mm. But I'm still the same person when I'm walking down the street, I'm still happy-go-lucky, you know? I still, but when I'm talking about this issue, there's so much anger there, so much pain. Mm. Um, but uh, I just have to, you know, I have to grit up mm. and keep it because there might be a time that he's wandering the streets and the fear is my family's under. Mm. Um, I'm not even that as well, know, not even from a... We're under, we're, we're basically held. Not even from a personal perspective, uh, Gary, but even, even for other people. Oh, Randomers just walking oh. the streets who probably wouldn't have a, a clue what James Redmond looked like. You, yeah. Do you know what I mean? It, it, it's a threat yeah, to everyone. Yeah, yeah. It's it. I think it's honestly, it's not one of these things where I'm just going to take a balanced view and I go, yeah. well, now Gary, he could be, you know, mentally. Oh, like, it seems, as I keep saying, it's, it's all well and good having positive conversations about mental health, but it has to, I think you said it best, it has to draw a line. Yeah, listen, I, yeah. Went, I went through, I had my own issues when I was going through this, I was in a state of post traumatic stress. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And I was in grief. I went straight into that. And uh, so I know what it's like, but, you know, the other stuff, I know depression, I know the. I know there's a lot of people that have that. Of course, yeah. And I've no argument with these people. These are no, okay, you it's know. It's completely different, yeah. But they're making these people out to be just depressed and now they have a, a constitutional right to murder as many people as they possibly can. Yeah. Excuse me? Mm. Hello? <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. I don't care what kind of personality yeah. you have. This is a line that no man or woman can cross, mm. you know? Going out deliberately doing it. Mm. And certainly deserves to be locked up for life. And Come I on. suppose there will be people listening to this. As I said, we've texted in on previous topics when we talked about yeah. maybe, uh, uh, you know, a, a parent taking the, the life of their own child their own hand, whatever, and a lot of kind of sympathy coming in. I think no. this may be the first time maybe people who were, maybe had a bit of sympathy are actually hearing the other side of the story yeah. of a family member affected by... I don't want to use the word crazy because you were saying yeah. that it wasn't crazy. You knew exactly what he was doing. But the you, horrific you, actions uh, of James Redmond. Yeah, yeah, when you're using that term, you're only stimulating ideas in people's yeah. heads. You know, the reality is mm. he went out to hoard flesh and blood. Mm. You know, let's talk about facts, mm. physical facts. And that's why his body went over that wall to murder as many people as he possibly could. And now you've got other doctors. And you know, this is the thing about psychology. You've got doctors on the other side of the argument. And the other side of that argument is like, so... It's open-ended, it's, it's gigantic, so people mm. need to listen to all the arguments before they come to a conclusion. Yeah. You know, well, as many as they possibly can. Mm, to get a bit of respect. Absolutely. Um, listen, uh, Gary, uh, yeah. thank you for your bravery coming on. I know it's your oh, first uh, radio interview you, you've yeah. done, and I think it's just important, because you know what, we read about stuff in the, in the yeah. newspaper, when it happens, and maybe revisit yeah. that sort of thing, but we yeah. necessarily never get to hear the, the actual voice behind uh, the tragedy, uh, especially the tragedy that was uh, in Tallinn in 2014. Listen, yes. uh, Gary, and, and to your family, thank you uh, so much for sharing your story. Okay, um, thank you very much, Keith, and I want to wish all your listeners a happy new year, and mm. Best of luck, okay? Yeah, Thank you very much, Keith. Sound of you. If you want to uh, catch uh, Gary's story, uh, read about it more, you can catch it in the Irish Sun. It's up on uh, irishsun.ie. Stephen Breen uh, wrote about it there over the Christmas. And as I said, it was just one of those things that just stuck out going, I can't believe what I'm reading here. It sounds like something out of a horror film, but it actually happened in 2014. And as you heard from Gary there, this guy could be let out, could be walking the streets soon enough. Back after this. The all-new FM 104 Phone Show with Keith Ward. It's got Dublin talking. FM 104. The all-new FM 104 Phone Show with Keith Ward. It has Dublin talking. FM 104. You're very welcome back. It's the all-new FM 104 Phone Show. Massive uh, reaction to Gary Dargan, who was live in the studio a couple of minutes ago, giving this, uh, oh, look heartbreaking doesn't even seem to do it justice but a story uh, there about his neighbour uh, mentally ill uh, neighbour James Redmond who broke into uh, his house uh, in 2014 and murdered his mom and basically tried to murder as many people uh, in his house as possible only for the fact Gary was there there's a lot of angry people texting in as well at um, I suppose at the state for because uh, it does it seems like a possibility that this man James Redmond um, could be released when his, he was found not guilty by reason of insanity his case comes up for review shortly and it could be a case that he, he may, may walk free and someone like Gary may have to w run into him uh, in, in his local area and uh, as you heard from Gary there 
uh, doesn't know exactly what he'll do but it's not going to be a, a good reaction which in fairness I don't think a lot of people listening can blame uh, Gary in that situation I want to go to Mick in a second uh, someone says I agree with Gary the death penalty needs to be brought back and that killer James Redmond needs to be hanged uh, I hope vigilantes get him Someone says, uh, another person, uh, heartbreaking listening to Gary's story there. Such a brave and strong man to be able to come on and talk about it. Yeah, that's what I thought as well. It was Gary's uh, first ever uh, radio interview about this. As you can imagine, it's not something you want to talk about. Um, but I, I suppose it was important for Gary to highlight uh, that, okay, that maybe this guy has a mental illness or th- at least that has been classified by the state that he has. But there becomes, it becomes a time where maybe the sympathy shouldn't go to James Redmond who shot dead uh, Gary's mom. that there should be a line that should be crossed that if if uh, you commit a heinous crime such as this well tough I don't care if it's a mental illness or not you don't get any sympathy and at, you know as you heard from Gary it sounds to me like the victim here now has been treated as James Redmond even though his poor mom was the one who got shot dead. Uh, 5 3 104 for 20 cent or 6 7 9 7 F 104 in this for your reaction Mick you're live in F 104 hi Mick How's it going, man? How were things? Uh, you were listening to you were listening to to Gary there. Um, Jesus, Keith, man, that was that was an interview and a half. I know it was. It, do you know what it was? You read, as I said, you read some of these things in the papers, and you go, "God, that's horrific." But you never get to meet these people. You never get to hear the story that they hear. That's it. The way you put stories it. in front of you. You know, what I mean, yeah. reading in paper, reading in the paper, it's it's not a touch that will get you. You know, mm. but when you talk to someone face to face like that, and then you just see the effect that has on people, that mm. would just it's, like it, it's really soul destroying. Well, you you were one of the angry people texting in uh, that uh, you know kind of basically cursing the the justice system and and the mental health uh, issues right. and all that sort of stuff. Because it seems like this guy James Remen, it's possible he could be released. Kate, we don't have a ju- we don't have a justice system in this country. It's a bleeding, swinging door system in this country. And to be honest, if it was me when he got released, I'd be on the doorstep waiting for him to be released, and I'd cut him and I'd cut him in half. If it was my parent, and I just I'd do time myself. I wouldn't care, but I just wouldn't. Leave, I couldn't leave him standing, and I just I hate. I don't give a shit about mental health issues or anything like that. Mm. At the end of the day, if you are caught, if you're able to murder someone, you deserve what you get. And that you you don't care if it's labelled as a mental illness. It's just I don't give yeah. a crap if you're blind, deaf, dumb, whatever you want to call it. Or like it doesn't matter what problem you have in your life, or no matter what, like how many times you may have been battered across the head. If you can kill someone, yeah. sorry, you know what I mean. You deserve what the hell you get. And if it was someone related to me, I wouldn't. I'd, I'd feed them to pigs as slowly as I could, just to watch them suffer. Even if that meant that you'd probably, well, almost certainly do time in prison yourself. I'd hop, skip and jump happily up to the guy at the station mm. and say, hey, I just killed him. And I wouldn't give a shit. That's what I mean, honest enough. Sorry mm. for the language people. And I know I'll probably get tired now, but the little go- do-gooders ringing in. Oh, he was a sick man. He was a sick man, so he deserves a sick bloody death. Well, see, the poor family that but see, Mick, you, that. you're right he probably was a, a, a sick man um, I obviously didn't know him so I can't say personally but he probably was a sick man but there comes a time when you just have to put this, the, you know, the sickness label aside and go I'm sorry I, yeah. I don't care the man murdered someone and if he had the chance if Gary wasn't there he would have murdered everyone so why yeah, there you, go. You, know. you know what pisses me off about this country Kate you can kill someone and you'll probably get yeah, 14 years, 15 yeah. years. Something like And they call it a life sentence, yeah. And that's a life sentence in this country. No, hold on. A life sentence in this country is what the people who survive these attacks are living with every day. And these sick little individuals that are behind bars <clears throat> that will get released in a few years and get to go on with their life, they can even leave the blue country, for God's sake. Mm. Like, how is that justice? You know what I mean? If, if I had my way, they'd be in prison, being battered every day, and if they're on the verge of death, give them a blood transfusion and then batter them the next fucking day. All right. Uh, lo- the stick with us for a second. Make a lot of anger from Mick, but uh, in fairness, it represents pretty much everyone that's texting in on 5304 uh, who's disgusted at the prospect that James Redmond may be released into society. Um, we heard there from Gary who said that uh, James' family, uh, who they live next door to, to, to Gary, uh, they fled once the incident happened, but uh, I suppose, I don't know, maybe James Redmond could come back to the Tala area. Uh, Paul, you're live on F104. Hey, Paul. Hi, how are you doing? How are things, Paul? What do you want to say? Uh, basically, like, you know, what I want to say is, um, 
I go on about this mental health business. Yeah. From what I heard of that gentleman telling the story, he already had a loaded gun and he had more cartridges. Yeah. He knew bloody well what he was doing. Mm. Now, fair enough, you know, they pull him away. They think he only got three years. If they let him out and he does it again, what's he going to get? Another three years? Hang on a minute. I'll just go over and rob an old lady. I'll probably guess uh, about two, maybe three years. But if I murder someone, I shall make it out in a year. That justice system is crazy. Yeah. It's and bloody the, ridiculous. And Paul, when you hear, when you hear, um, and look, again, I'm, I must stress, because I don't want people, you know, people complaining, saying that we're having a go at mental health. I think at this stage, no, not, I think no. I, I think at this stage, uh, Front of Four Phone Show has done quite a bit to promote positive conversation with mental health. But... When you hear stuff like, oh, he had a mental illness, does that not really, does that piss you off, Paul? Like, th- that's been used it, as an excuse, it, basically, it pisses, for... It yeah. pisses me off to a certain point, but what I will say is, a couple of years ago, my my, my health went really, really downhill, and I did get into a bit of depression, and yeah, I did get it sorted out. But then you come along and you have people like your man, Redmond. Yeah. He, he knew what he was doing. Jesus, he had the gun in his hands. I'm not, I don't. I don't want to bring up anything with the family. I, I feel very, very sorry for. But he has shells. He, he knew exactly what he was doing, mm. and then he gets a plea of insanity. And if that man that told the story sees Mister Redmond, and he does basically go kill him, I mean, what's he going? He's going to do fourteen, fifteen years, and this guy can blow someone away and mm. only get two or three. Oh, hang on a minute! I wasn't feeling the best. Sometimes I, it pisses yeah. me off to hear that. Does it when, but, when you had you had a bout of depression, Paul? I does did the, have, does, yes. Does it yes. then offend? Does it then offend you when you hear the the mental illness label uh, being given to someone like James Redmond? That it, I suppose you know depression no. is obviously a mental illness. That, does it offend you that no. you've been put in the same bracket? No, 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 no. I was, I was, I was basically because of my because of my ill health. I was basically told not to work. I was okay. advised. I was advised not to drive. That kind of got to me a bit. It didn't make me any worse. It quite just put me in a little bit of a rush. Yeah. I could never got rushed. Fair I, enough, I, yeah. I, 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 a lot, a lot of people listening to it. A lot of people listening to it. I had the ability to, to yeah. go to someone. Yeah. I went, I went, I had the ability to go somewhere and said, look, I have a problem. I can't do this anymore. I need someone to talk to. And that's all it takes. But this guy comes along with a loaded weapon now, this is what really annoys me. You know, what annoys me is he comes along with a load of gun and he has more cartridges. If that man wasn't there, God forbid, there could have been devastation in the house. Yeah, and I think, yeah, and, and I think it's safe to say uh, Gary's family would mean, have been completely for, taken out. Yeah. What I can't understand is they passed an insanity plea. Jesus, he must have had a damn good bloody solicitor or that judge must have been fast asleep when he was listening to the evidence. Mm. There's a lot of people texting in on 5314. Um, well, a few. It's a, it's a minority texting in, basically saying, uh, where is it there? Uh, Jay's the lack of compassion uh, towards a guy with mental illness is uh, outstanding on this show. <laughs> Do you know what? I don't, I, I, I don't like, by law, I don't have to have, you know, even as a presenter, by law, I don't have to have compassion for someone who, okay, he may have a mental illness, but I'm sorry, he murdered someone. And if he had the chance, he would have murdered them all. I'm sorry, God, I must be such a bad guy that I don't have sympathy for this guy. It reminds me at the time, I remember putting it up on Facebook um, oh, about a year or two ago. Is it Anders Lubitz? I think that's his name. The German pilot who um, deliberately crashed a plane into the side of a mountain, if you remember that. I put up on the F104 phone show because this guy deliberately and meticulously planned not only his own death but about 200 other people. I said this guy was a nut job on on the F104 phone show Facebook page and there was lots of people who were offended saying oh my god how, how, how can he be so insensitive to this guy who has a mental illness he was obviously in a dark place. Well I'm sorry, tough. I don't care. You lose sympathy when you do something like murder 200 people or in this case James Redmond murdering uh, Mary Dargan. And I'm sorry, there's people texting in who seem to, to think that I should have some sort of sympathy as a presenter. I don't. Simple as. Uh, Des, you're live on F104. How are you, Des? How are you doing, Keith? How are you? How are things? Sorry for keeping you waiting, Des. Um, you, you, were, you were a relative um, of, of Mary and Gary, is it? I am, yeah. Yeah. I am. I was just saying, it's, just, it's the justice system mm. in this country now, you know. That, it just proves things, you know. Mm. Like even, like Robert Eager there up at the trial. And actually, telling the jury, in his situation, he would have 
find the defendant not guilty as well. Yeah. Now, there's a lot to be said for that. There's I mean, a lot to be said for the whole family up there. I mean, I saw, uh, Des, I saw like first hand a couple of minutes ago. Ang- I, I saw firsthand a couple of minutes ago the anger that was uh, in, in that still is in Gary. I assume it's it's the same with yourself. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's an anger that I've never lived. Like you know. Yeah. Can you remember? Can you remember finding out that day what happened? Remember it very well. Remember it very well today. I'll never forget. Yeah. But uh, I mean that, 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 that I mean find something it's such a unexpected horrific uh, thing to happen uh, I can only imagine what your mind is thinking when you when you find out some sort of news like that as well you know? oh, it was unbelievable so I went to watch a football match at 4 o'clock that day yeah and then I got the phone call and then then all the chaos was going on mm. but um, it's absolutely sick and for anyone to even think that, that sick pig opened that dumb drum he had me in his day on that seven or eight carriages in his pocket and there were six or seven six of them in the house that day that meant he was the whole. He was there to kill the whole family. Mm, and he had, and and he, and and he had enough. And he had enough to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And there was one from Charles then. Cold heart, so that's all I think. When you, when you hear, especially some of the, some of the texts, and I must stress some, but some of the texts um, coming in, but of either either having to go with me or maybe having to go with some of the people on air uh, who have a lack of sympathy for people like James Redmond, not just him. But uh, how does that make you feel? That they, they, that they have sympathy for for him because they said, look, this well, guy, he was in a dark place, a mental yeah. illness. Let little things come upon their own families like that. And then, say, the sadness and uh, and what involves, what everything has, what everybody goes through. Like, I mean, Mary's grand, he, he, her granddaughters was there, young kids playing at a kitchen table. Yeah. And seeing the nanny said, literally, I'm not even going to go into it, but her nanny being blown away in front of them. Their cousin ready to be killed only for Gary Lloyd. It's absolutely crazy. Like, it's, it's, these are things that you hear in America. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's like, something you hear in the films it, or something. It, it, yeah. it doesn't happen in Ireland, you know? No. Thankfully, it doesn't. But yeah, it, when, that's what I suppose shocked me about the story in the first place. I think, what? Do you know what I mean? It, it was such a shock to the crazy. system to even read, let alone to have Gary in here as well. Um, you have a people, you, you have people going up. That it just shows you the whole justice system. Mm. Everything is backwards in the country. You have people, you have women there with fucking young kids, television guys are locking them up. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, this man was in to do massive mayhem murders across the board, killing the whole family. He was there to say only for Gary that he didn't know Gary was in the sitting room watching that football match. Des, I'll ask you the same question as I asked uh, Gary. Yeah. If you come across James Redmond, if he's released, if James Redmond is released, and you come across him on the streets, do you know how you're going to react? Well, use your little friend that I use, like, I mean... I mean, are you prepared for, for that possible your, situation? It's hard to pick up your teeth with broken fingers, use what I say, but at the end of the day, I'd, I'd love to get my hands on him, because I just tie him up and they shared my star. I, I, I just have him in the room for the, the last dying hours, and... That'd be my goal. That'd be my goal. I just mm. I would have time up in the room and I just heard you that man. Listen, Des, uh, thank you for that, Des, a relative there um, of poor uh, Mary Dargan, um, Gary's uh, mom. Uh, a lot of people texting in on 53104 who, um, a bit like Des, a bit like Paul, a bit like Mick, are extremely angry uh, at the situation. I think it's a story that a lot of people maybe hadn't heard until the Irish Sun uh, did it uh, over the over the Christmas. Uh, that's someone said, if that man was so insane, why did he not kill his own family first, someone says on 53104. Uh, another person, someone who is in danger to others should be kept away from uh, from them and the victim should be cared first and foremost uh, that said if the man has mental illness then he shouldn't be punished for being ill there's a difference between depression and delusions and psychosis if you were hypnotised or someone used magic uh, to make you rob a bank uh, you wouldn't expect to be punished because you weren't in control psychotic people are not in control of their own minds uh, someone says on 4 I accept that they're, they're grand maybe they're not in control of their own minds if they're going through a psychosis that's totally fine doesn't mean you let them back out when they're feeling fine do you know it doesn't if, if they did an act especially as heinous as this crime as James Redmond did say in a psychosis in a psychotic episode okay maybe you can accept that that's what happened doesn't mean you let them back out when they're feeling grand and dandy surely not 
where, like, where does your sympathy lie, I suppose? Uh, lock him up forever when he dies. Uh, erase his name and let him go to the pit. Uh, this is from Emmanuel, uh, who is a schizophrenic. Uh, tell the do-gooder, uh, do-gooders to shut up about uh, compassion for a cold-blooded uh, murder. That's someone who obviously suffers from a serious mental illness, and he's not buying this either. How can idiots feel sorry for James Rebin after he killed Gary's mom and plan to kill the rest of his family uh, if Gary did not stop when he did? Uh, the justice system uh, in Ireland is an absolute joke. Um... Uh, let me see. I don't know. It goes on like that. Um, 53104 for 20 cent or 6797F104 for your reaction to that. Um, we'll pop the podcast, the interview that we just did with Gary Dargan uh, up on Facebook a little bit later on if you missed it. I know a couple of people uh, texting in seem to have missed it. And again, hello to uh, the people complaining over the lack of sympathy. Listen, I, I don't think I have to go to pains and lengths of saying it. I, you know, I've lots of uh, compassion for people with mental illness. We've talked about mental illness so many times on the phone show uh, and positive conversations. Absolutely. This, as Gary says, where do you draw the line? I think there comes a time where we have to stop going, well, God love him. He had a, he had a mental illness, so that's why he killed his whole family. I'm sorry. If you kill your whole family or if you intend to kill your whole family, you don't get away with it a bit like James Rebin tried to do, only for Gary turned up. I do not have any sympathy and I'm not, I'm not going to apologize for it. And, uh, when Gary, someone like Gary Dargan's, uh, sitting, in front of you and you can see the anger and the hurt uh, in his face uh, maybe you think differently anyway got to move on um, I mentioned at the top of the show this is an email that came uh, into us into the F104 phone show uh, Facebook page actually uh, we still got up on Facebook if we want to get involved um have a listen to this. It's, I suppose it's a bit of a dilemma, and it's maybe something that a lot of people maybe are in this situation. Uh, hi, Keith. I'm having an internal dilemma at the minute. Uh, I was involved in a horrific crash a year ago. I spent months in rehabilitation to try and get my mobility back. I can finally move somewhat normally again, but every movement causes extreme pain and exhaustion. I've tried every painkiller under the sun, but they, but they either don't work or leave me so doped out of it that I can't even begin to function. Uh, I've been reading a lot about the benefits of medicinal marijuana and two weeks ago I finally took the jump and went to a drug dealer. Almost instantly I've seen an improvement from using the marijuana but at the same time I'm aware that I'm actively fueling crime in Dublin by buying from a dealer. I feel really guilty about buying from a dealer. I've been against crime my whole life but I need this marijuana. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there um, in similar situations that maybe they've, they've tried a lot of painkillers and medicinal marijuana or maybe just even smoking and not even talking about the cannabis oil just smoking uh, marijuana does it for them and relaxes them or eases their pain a little bit this is a woman who says that she's basically been forced to go to a drug dealer now to buy her cannabis she feels wrong about it um, would you go to a drug dealer if you needed to if you needed to buy marijuana for a medical condition would you go to a drug dealer knowing full well that the money you spend I suppose goes towards Guns, gangland activity, that sort of thing. Five three one zero four for twenty cent, or six seven nine seven F one zero four, or maybe the way around this is just make marijuana and cannabis legal. The all new FM one zero four phone show with Keith Ward. It has Dublin talking. FM one zero four. You're very welcome back. It's the all new F104 phone show with myself, uh, Keith Ward. 6797F104 is the number, or 53104 for 27. We're talking about this uh, mail that was sent into us on the F104 phone show Facebook page. Want to do the same? Any topic you want to bring up, uh, drop us a private message there. Uh, leave your number, if you don't mind, and uh, we'll get back to you. Uh, this is uh, what we're talking about at the moment. Um, a woman basically feels that she's been forced uh, to go to a drug dealer to buy marijuana. She was in a horrific uh, crash about a year ago, and she's tried a lot of painkillers. No one gave her relief other than marijuana and she says that she's been forced uh, to go to a drug dealer to buy it she says I feel really guilty about buying from a dealer I've been against crime my whole life but I need this marijuana and she also says um that uh, she knows that uh, by bu- buying from a drug dealer, uh, it could be contributing to gangland crime. 
and it, look, let's be honest, let's call a spade a spade. It probably is. If you're going to a drug dealer and you're buying hash, cannabis, marijuana, whatever you want to call it, you know, it's not going to, the money's not going to a good place, is it? Uh, but would that stop you? If you were in a similar situation to this woman, would it stop you going to a drug dealer and buying marijuana? Maybe you think there's nothing wrong with it. Maybe you think the stigma for marijuana, cannabis, that sort of thing should be completely lifted, especially when it comes to medicinal reasons. Um, or maybe like some of the texts coming in that seem to think uh, that this woman is using uh, her uh, illness as an excuse uh, just to score dope, uh, as Niall says on 52104. Um, or maybe you think that the easy solution to this is cannabis should be just made legal for anyone who wants it. Anyone who has any sort of an ailment where you've got a bad back, a bad knee, a bad neck, uh, you suffer from anxiety that you should be able to go to your local chemist or doctor and just buy a big bag of marijuana and there's nothing wrong with it. 6797F104 or 53104 for uh, 20 cent. Uh, Sarah, you're live in F104. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Keith. How's it going? Good, good. What do you want to say in this, Sarah? Well, in fairness, right, she shouldn't be going to get it illegally anyway. There is numerous ways out there that she can go and seek help for her pain. Like, I mean, she's not the only one that's like suffering with long-term pain. No. I mean, know, she says, she says she's tried a lot of... For that. But she yeah, says she's no, tried a lot of painkillers and they d- d- didn't work and they weren't that effective. So marijuana does it for her. But there's other things other than painkillers that she can go and... Do you know what I mean? Like, there's yeah. alternative remedies out there. Like, do you know what I mean? She doesn't need to be going and... basically going and buying off drug dealers, like... Do you think, like, would you be uh, someone who'd be big time against even buying a small bit of marijuana or cannabis off of a so-called drug dealer? Yeah. Why? Because you think it's against it. Why? Because you, you think it's going towards criminality. Yeah, exactly. It's, 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 that, that's part. That would be the, the most mm. part of it. Like, I mean, we're already in the process of legalizing it for medicinal purposes mm. because it's you know they need the pure form of the TCH to isn't a TCH that's in it or THC something like that. Yeah, it's well, it's basically it's the the cannabis oil that that seems to be doing yeah, the trick. Yeah, it's called THC or TCH. We we'll get it. We we'll get a doctor on next. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's that that are trying to legalize for medicinal purposes. Mm. And in the meantime, while she's waiting on that. She's not the only person in the world that suffers from chronic pain. So you think she should, you should just suck it up and just yeah. deal with it instead of, instead with of the yeah. legal the act? Way, yeah, the way every other poor person out there suffering with chronic pain has to. Well, then she's not buying heroin, but, but I suppose Where? in your eyes you don't see a difference. It's a drug. No, there's no difference. This business of, oh, it's not heroin, oh, it's not cocaine, it's all the same. Yeah. It, it basically all the same. Like. And do you think it's gone to the same people? It's gone towards the mm. same criminality definitely yeah. yeah all right stick with us for a second sarah 53 yeah. 104 for 20 cent uh liam hi liam how's it going everything's you're live in the all new f104 phone show uh what what you want to say the woman obviously needed it she said she tried everything that she could and um if it was legalized it wouldn't be in the hands of the money wouldn't be in the hands of uh, the criminals and it wouldn't be, it'd be legalized and the money would be in the government you know what i mean we'd be all laughing yeah well, but, liam, it's not legalized it's that's not, the yeah. problem yeah, but that, that, that is the problem. We should legalise yeah. it. And then you know, then that woman wouldn't have to meet a bleeding drug dealer. I agree with you. And then the money wouldn't go to bleeding... I agree with you. Well, currently, yeah, well, currently as it stands, Liam, it isn't uh, legal. So she she's been forced to go to uh, a drug dealer to buy it. You don't see anything wrong with that? No, I definitely don't. I definitely don't. Do you, do you smoke cannabis yourself, uh, Yeah, Liam? I do, only on the weekends. And so what? Would you smoke it every day? No, no, on the weekends I'd have, like, you know, after a hard, a hard week of work, I'd, I'd sit down, I'd relax. I'd, after six, seven o'clock, have two or three, watch a bit of telly, chill out, go to bed, no problem. Not like going on the drink, going mad and wanting to go on the way and call the order. Just chilling out and having a drink. So there you go, Sarah. Le- 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 That's a- what I'm just saying. Yeah. What's the difference? You may as well be sitting having a drink. I sit and smoke with a joint. Three orders, bad as well. No, drink leads to everything. Drink is, drink is what causes it. Come here, people don't realise, like, what marijuana does. You think, oh, it's all this healthy, bold, well, and it, it it's great, it comes from a plant. You know what I mean? I tell which you, heroin comes from a plant. Yeah, it increases Cocaine your comes from a plant. It makes you smile. No, it doesn't. It, make, it makes you smile, Sarah. What about the long-term, what about the long-term effects? Well, what about the long-term it effects of being McDonald's? You know what I mean? And drinking Sorry? alcohol. It's alcohol and, and McDonald's are big killers as well, but they're not We're not, we're not talking, I mean? to, but come here, if I was talking about McDonald's and alcohol, I'd, it'd be completely different, but we're not, we're talking about marijuana. They're just as bad as each other. 
I agree, Le- and that's what I'm saying. So, Liam, obviously, as as, we, as everyone's aware, uh, cannabis, marijuana, hash, yeah. uh, none of it's legal at the moment. Um, so you have to go to a drug dealer to buy it. Exactly. I'm the victim. I have to go out and meet somebody at a corner and, uh, and give him money. And a uh, real uh, groggy, horrible situation. He's all smiley. Oh, hey, your pal, pretend to be your friend. He's not your friend. He just wants your well, money. You don't, you don't have to. Yeah. I mean, no, no, no one's saying you have like, to. Like, yeah, but if you wanted it, do you know what I mean? That's the yeah. thing. People, either way, like whether, whether you like it or not, people that want to smoke uh, weed or hash or whatever, they're going to it anyway. Do you know whether it's illegal or not? So why, why, why not legalise it and get it out of the hands of the criminals and get it into the hands of uh, the government? And then we can uh, put money together to fix our broken country. Yeah, I mean, look, you talked a lot of sense. A lot of people texting in for you before are, are, are supporting the le- legalization of of cannabis. But as I keep saying, currently as it stands, name it isn't, and you're going to a drug deal. I mean, like, does that? You, do you have any uh, conflict with the fact that the, I suppose the money that you pay your drug dealer to to buy cannabis is more than likely going towards criminality, whether to be buy a gun or to buy some gangster a new car or whatever. It's, it's you're funding that, that lifestyle. Yeah, and that's the sad thing about it. That's what the government is so thick. They can't say how much money is in it, how much money is in it themselves. But do, you, do you not feel guilty because you're part? I mean, you're part of that. You're no, contributing go- to it. I think the government should feel guilty. I mean. Look at um, look at California. Look at America, America, um, Amsterdam. The whole lot. They're all on the ball. Do you know what I mean? They're all yeah. making loads of money now. Canada. It's half legalized in Canada. But it's, everywhere is doing great bar oil because we're so stupid about everything. All right, well, stick with us, uh, Liam. Uh, sounds like someone's smoking in the background there as well. Uh, 6797 F104 uh, is the number. Uh, let me see. I believe anyone taking marijuana is heading for mental health issues in their future. Well, certainly there seems to be a link. I don't know if it exists in everyone, but there seems to be a link between some mental uh, health uh, issues and marijuana. I think it's, it's a schizophrenia or something's linked to it. But then again, look, do you, then again, you talk to people who maybe have smoked it for 20 years and they're fine. So uh, it's not necessarily always the case. Uh, Apparently it works so much uh, in this, but the big pharmaceutical companies hold everyone for ransom and plus cannabis is cheaper too. Uh, government, 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 someone says. Uh, Hi Keith, why doesn't she just get cannabis oil? She can also buy it for a vapor, a cigarette, it works and it's not expensive. Uh, and she doesn't have to go to any dealer for it. Well, I don't know, maybe she's tried it and she says it doesn't work. But currently at the moment, the only, se- the only thing that she takes that seems to work or offer her any relief is marijuana and smoking marijuana. And she feels desperately guilty. Do you ever go into a drug dealer for it? 6797F104. Jason, hi, Jason. How are you? How are things? You're live in the all-new F104 phone show. Uh, what, you, you were in kind of a similar situation. You had an accident before, was it? Yeah, I had a bad accident there about a year ago and I've suffered on my back terrible ever since and just loved the doctors and I gave really woefully. So you were put on what? Painkillers? I suppose heavy enough painkillers, was it? Oh, yeah, everything, anything, the and everything was full of loads of prescriptions for cyber and anything. Tried everything and nothing worked for it. Nothing worked? Nothing. Oh. I was taking all the tablets as well, then I got stomach ulcer and all that, so it was bad. Mm. Taking all the tablets, like. So then in that case, do you smoke cannabis? Yeah, I do, yeah. Only, like, only recreation, like in the evenings or whatever, to mm. ease the pain at the back. So, uh, well, I mean, that's what I was going to ask you. Did you smoke cannabis before you got the back injury? Like, it would just no. be something that you would have done before? No, not really. When I was younger, I probably would have tried it, yeah, but not when I crashed up and I'm done with the accident happened, no. And does that, honestly, does that work a treat for you, smoking right. marijuana to, to ease the pain? Does it ease the pain? Yeah, of course it does. And where, do you, you don't have to tell me who it is or whatever, but where where do you get it? Do you, did you go to a drug dealer? Right, you could walk out and any, any car and you can get anything. Say again? Like, any, you can get it anywhere, like, it's, you don't have to look too hard, like. So... What, you just get on the street somewhere? Yeah, well, obviously you know somebody, like, well... Yeah. You know yourself. And you, you don't... I mean, I'm not saying you should. I'm just saying, I mean, this was just the dilemma this woman has. She feels awfully guilty that the money that she's given a drug dealer for her cannabis is probably going to some criminal gang. Do you, you don't... That doesn't bother you whatsoever. Well, would you rather be in pain all the time? You know what it's like? Any sort of pain is mm. irritating for the shortest amount of the time, let alone to have it all the time. Well, Sarah, there you go. Uh, works a yeah, treat I for Jason. Works. Yeah, I think it's complete bullshit. It's an what? excuse. What do you mean? Like, Did you think what? I mean, well, Jason says it's not like it's not just for recreation, Jason. It's no. just for for illness. So you say anyway. It's for the pain. Come here, like like the text that come in. Go and get cannabis oil. You don't have to go to any drug dealer for that. It's still the same thing. Could you not do that, Jason? You have to go for it for that. 
Say no, again? you don't. You get away I mean, you mean you'd have to walk by the corner, like. Oh, well, then, like, well, 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 hang on. What's the problem with, with smoking cannabis oil, uh, Jason? In a, in a like vaping? Oh no, it's really not. No, I don't know where you get it or anything. So. You don't know where you get it, but yet you know where to no. to get marijuana. Well, so, unfortunately, it's easier, keep, like, it's easier. It is easier to like. Probably I mean, is. It's probably easier is. to get. Like, do you know, you know what? what? It probably is though. Like, yeah, I mean, it is. Do you know what I mean? It's actually probably, honestly, people listen probably think that I'm bullshit. It's probably easier to get marijuana or cocaine in Dublin than it is to get uh, norofin over the county. You only ask you 20 million questions to get a box of norofin. It's probably yeah. easier to get a bag of marijuana. Yeah. No questions asked. I mean, Jason, are you going to, what, going to be smoking cannabis now for the rest of your life? Well, it's just back sorted itself out, probably, yeah. Are you able to work with it? Like, are you able to have a couple of spliffs and work? Yeah, but then you suffer more with the pain. No, I wouldn't smoke in both, like, but then when you come home, like, your back would be pain, sore after the day's work or whatever, and you kind mm. of, like, relax and take pain away. Like. Mm. So you're not going to try any cannabis oil, you're just going to stick with the couple of spliffs? Yeah, probably, yeah. And you're not worried about any, any long-term effects that it may have if you smoke it every day? Yeah, but I wouldn't be smoking it, like, like lighting them off each other and all. Like, you only have a joint, two joints every night. All right, uh, cheers for that, uh, Jason. 6797F104. Uh, Snoop Dogg smokes weed every day, someone says on text. Yeah, fair enough, but when's the last uh, decent album we've had from Snoop Dogg? Maybe maybe that's the reason why. Uh, 53104 for 20 cents as well. Uh, another person says, uh, I don't believe uh, marijuana works. It's just an excuse for stoners to get high, someone says. Uh, here you go, Liam. Uh, someone says on text that you're, you're just a, a stoner. She's a liar. It's not just a stoner. Do you know what I mean? You can... You can, you can you look at all these people out there bleeding on heroin and zombies getting left getting money left right and centre for this have, having a couple of joints. I mean, some people like to drink and cause murder on the weekends, and some people like to have a couple of joints, and chill out. I mean, what's the harm in that? Everybody has their own choice. Do you know what I mean? It's not like they're going out and, and banging the lifestyle that you're you're and from and you're having a couple of joints. Do you know? Say again, Sarah. The lifestyle that he's funding from. That's my problem. Yeah, well, Liam, Liam doesn't really seem to care. No, well, that's that's what that's what's wrong. People don't care, and so they're contributing to all this garbage yeah, and all this. Have to, if it was legalized. This is the problem. If it was I understand that, and I would have absolutely no issue with it being well, legalized. This is where we're stuck. We're stuck in the grey area yeah. of we, it should be legalized. It's not legalized. So all we're going to have to do we're going to have to get off drug dealers. That's the area we're in. Or you could just not buy marijuana. Like well, nothing that, says you have to, Liam. Do you know what I mean? Nothing says you have to. Sorry, excuse me. What did you say? You're kind of basically making the argument until it's legal, people would just have to go to drug dealers. Just saying, when you, yeah. you don't necessarily, no one's, no one's forcing you to smoke weed. Exactly, this country is backwards. So all can be isn't even legalized for uh, cystic fibrosis patients in this country. We can't get, mm. we can't get nothing in this country. It's backwards. Mm. All right, got to take a quick break. Uh, stick with us, guys. Five three one zero four for twenty cent. Uh, hi, Keith. Cost the HSC of my pain meds uh, to the states uh, for opiates uh, is over thirty two thousand uh, euro a month. What thirty two thousand euro a month uh, for opiates, um, and they no longer work. If I ever get a joint, I'm pain free for a day. Paul says on five three one zero four. Uh, cannabis oil works for everything. Oil for vaping and CBD uh, oil for pain are available in hemp uh, shops uh, in town. Uh, if methadone is prescribed, why not marijuana? Someone asks on 5214. Joe, I think that's a, that's a sensible question. Uh, 6797F104, we're going to come back and talk to Wayne, who is a massive cannabis smoker and I assume has no problem about going up to a drug dealer and buying cannabis uh, from him. Knowing full well, as I said, that the money you're giving that drug dealer uh, is obviously going towards uh, criminality. It's going towards funding a drug gang. Um but maybe if you're in pain, like the listener sent us in the message, maybe if you're in pain, you don't care that your priority is to get some pain relief, especially if, um, especially if painkillers haven't worked up to then. Back after this. It gets Dublin talking. The all new FM 104 phone show with Keith Ward. It's the all new F104 phone show. 6797F104 is the number. Wayne, you're live in F104. How are you, Wayne? How are you, Keith? How are you? Happy how, New Year. You too, man. You too. Uh, yeah, yeah, how are things? Sounds like you're having a good night. Uh, uh, yeah, come here, Keith. I'm just heading home there. I'm just heading home there. Just taking it easy. Well, well, well listen, what, what, what's the crack? You, I assume you, you, smoke, uh, you smoke cannabis, what, every day? Keith, as soon as you open your eyes. Right. Why? Why, why? why do you feel the need to, as soon as you open your eyes well, to roll have, a joint? I don't have a joint, I'm cranky then. It's, like a, it's not being bad or anything. 
But You're cranky. Like, uh, it's like I can't function without it. It's, well, a it it's a horrible way to be, Bookie. Well, I mean, in that horrible case, way. in that case, Wayne, would you say that you're addicted to? I am to addicted camps? to it. Yeah, yeah, I am. I'll be outside with you now. We never. This is the first time I've ever told someone now. I am addicted, and I've only realised that over the last month or so. Still yeah. talking to yourself. Mm. Like, how much? There, 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 there be people. There be people who believe that you can't get addicted uh, to cannabis That's and marijuana. Kid, Listen, in. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm smoking, but. Kid, mm. Right. If all you haven't got is a, a smoke there for yourself. Good luck. I go to a bleed wall. I would. All right. So how many? How, how much? How much are you spending on on uh, cannabis a day? Well, people, they would say I'm addicted to it. Right. Yeah. I'd only spend thirty euro on it. Now I wouldn't go. There's people. I know people out there that spend a hundred euro on it a day. And so, so don't ask me where you get the fucking money for it. Sorry for the language. So thirty thirty euro a day, seven yeah, days a week. Seven seven days a week. Yeah. That's a bad, bad way to be. Jeez. Now, my mother in law is probably listening to me now on this now, saying this, mm. but it's a bad, bad way to be. And Wayne, so obviously you you buy your weed from a from a dealer. Um, I do, yeah. I do you do, know yeah. Do you know the dealer well, or is he like? I mean, I do, yeah, I know him. Yeah, I know him since my kid. Okay, so you kind of feel like you can trust him. You're not you're not basically going yeah, up. Kid, no, come here. There's, 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 there's uh, people out there now that spray. What do you mean they spray? Talking? But there's times now you'd bought, I bought, I bought stuff before there on the, off somebody that I didn't know and I went home and see when I had the smoke I, I ended up throwing in the bin because there was massive pain in my head. What do you mean the to spraying it with what? Spraying it with what? It could be sprayed with anything. could be sprayed with heroin, heroin it could be sprayed with fiber glass. You name it, they'll spray it. What, to, why? To give it an extra kick or something? Why? Take, no, no. To make more weight on it. More money oh, for them. Oh, right, I see. You get me? So it weighs more so they can sell it for more. So exactly, what you're saying? Yeah. So if it comes legal into Ireland, mm. you know, I was told there, uh, when it comes legal into Ireland, I go to the. Who was that? Uh, the, what's the medical card place again? What? The medical. The, what? The methadone clinic? One of those no, places? You know, uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, you can go and get a card off them. Yeah. And then you can. Social welfare, it. yeah. Something like that. You can go and get something like that, and then you'll be able to get it. Over the counter, at least you mm. know. Then it's clean. You get me. Well, what would you say, Le- Liam? You're still there. Um, yeah. You can hear Wayne there. Wayne reckons he's addicted uh, to cannabis. Yeah, would yeah you? I, I feel his pain. It is very addictive. It is, but I just would I you would you say you're addicted, Liam? Oh yeah, but I'm saying more on control. Like I keep busy. Liam, like I, Liam, I, I, I ask you something, Liam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you haven't got it, do you ever get? Do you ever get narky? Do you ever get frustrated? I, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Definitely. Do you ever feel like put, putting your fist through a brick wall? Yeah, I do, but you see, this is the thing. Oh, I keep busy, I walk all day, and then I, I have it at the night time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I've done it. I've done it. I've yeah. got knuckles and everything because I haven't got it. Ah, no, it wouldn't be that bad for it. Do you know what I mean? No, well, yeah, that's yeah. how bad it is. I, 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 mean, I usually always have it as well, though. Do you know what I mean? So the, the panic of it, it's never, you never really worry. I have it always there. Well, Liam, so have, I, you, I don't smoke have, have you heard you know? Have you heard what Wayne just said to me there about the yeah. fact that they spray it now? Have you heard it? This is the first time I've heard it. I heard a lot of people saying that they spray it with heroin, but that would yeah. just be throwing money away. So there's already loads of money in heroin, so why would you throw it away on weed? People are going to come back for weed anyways. But I'd, I'd love the idea of going to a counter where you know it's lovely and clean. That idea that, that Wayne is coming out with is perfect. Mm. You know what I mean? Why don't you just do that like in Amsterdam and everywhere else? You know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. I, I was in Amsterdam about two months ago, and uh, it was just, you know, you could smell weed absolutely everywhere. It was all over the city. And people were just casually smoking it in cafes. And you're right, you could go in to, it looks like a bar, like a cafe, like, you know, a coffee shop. You go in and it has a menu in front of you. And it's like, do you want medium strength, really strong or kind of, you know, whatever. Uh, and you can buy a spliff and just well, smoke it away indoors. Question. What one did you go for? <laughs> You're putting me on the spot now. Yeah, come uh, on. No, 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 listen, I've no problem admitting this. Uh, no, I went for medium strength. Now, I haven't. Played, honestly. No, honestly, I uh, I haven't smoked. I'd say can- look, look, we all look. Not saying we all did. The people listening go, we all we all didn't do it. I haven't smoked cannabis or marijuana, or whatever you want to call it, since I was a teenager. So this was probably yeah. about ten, twelve years. But when you're in Rome, when you're in Amsterdam, I decided to give it a try. Now, to be honest with you. Like when I was a teenager, it doesn't agree with me, Wayne. I just I feel sick or I feel tired. I never got a buzz out of it, and fortunately, Amsterdam, the exact same thing happened again. Didn't get a buzz out of it. Yeah, but 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 I, I I respect you, obviously too. Yeah, it's not fire. 
Like, you no, it wasn't. Take it, so you're not going to go near it. I'm like one of those people. I don't know. Do you know some people that you just don't drink, and you go, "Why don't they drink?" And you go, "I just don't like the idea of being out of control, whatever." I'm just one of those people that, for whatever reason, just if I smoke cannabis, I just get tired or sleepy. That's it. it doesn't agree with me. On fire, right? Go on. I I haven't had it. I hadn't touched a drink at all over Christmas. And mm. This is me second. This is me third year in a row to do it. So I'm two years without a drink. Yeah. Or two. Yeah. Two years without a drink. Yeah. But but still, you still heavily rely on another drug though to get by. And oh, so that, yeah. All right, well, listen, listen wait. I, yeah. I used to smoke cigarettes, but now I don't. See if I haven't got a joint, yeah. I smoke a cigarette. Mm. But see if I have a joint, yeah. I won't go near the cigarette. All right, well, listen, I want to, stick with us, Wayne, for a second. I want to bring Carl in on this. 53104 for 20 said There's people shocked that I, God forbid, I admit it, smoking a joint um, in Amsterdam. Two months ago, uh, medium strength. Uh, I just, I don't know. I can't. I just, I'm one of those people that, for whatever reason, I just, I don't like it. I just don't. I just don't agree with me. But um, I decided, look, I'm in Amsterdam, give it a go. Uh, put it this way, I stuck to the beer for uh, the rest of the holiday. I just couldn't cope. Uh, Carl, you're live in F104A, Carl. What's the story, Keith? How are What's you? What's up, man? Good, good. Uh, other than the fact I just revealed uh, spoken weed live on air, but two minutes ago, I'm, I'm feeling good. A lot of shocked people out there. Well, not many. Yeah, it's not, it's not really a shocking thing anymore, is it, Carl? It's not, to be honest with you. Like if, if, if you put it this way, Keith, half of the population are smoking it these days. And to be honest with you, I'm smoking it since I'm the age of 11 years of age. That is no exaggeration. I'm 23 years of age now. And to be honest with you, it's actually the best choice I've ever made in my life. For me, for, listen to this, Keith. For me to go out, get up in the morning, right? Now, as much as I, I, when I get up in the morning, I want to smoke a big fat joint before I go to work, but I can't, unfortunately. But, so what I do is, I go in, I go to work, and through me work, I'm thinking, joints, 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 I want to go home and smoke a joint, I want to go home and smoke a joint. Yeah. And as soon as I get home, Keith, and I roll that joint and smoke it, it's like heaven. It's like heaven. You don't understand. So People are getting it all wrong. Are, so so you addicted smoke. then, Carl? You addicted? I'm heavily addicted, Keith, and I'd admit that. I've no problem with that. That, that, that can't be, no, that can't be a good thing. I mean, look, I know you, I know it's not heroin. I, I get that. I'm not, I'm not trying to make weed out to be, you know, like heroin or anything. I do get that. But it's, yeah. surely that can't be a healthy thing if you're addicted to any drug. But who's to say it's not healthy, Keith? Yeah, like, if you look, if I know, now listen to me. Like, people, people are getting it wrong. Medicated... Medicated um, cannabis is is obviously the best for sick children, like um, scoliosis and whatnot. All right, but when it's coming to buying weed on the streets, it's actually dangerous. Like yeah. you don't know what you're buying because, as your man was saying there previously, it's sprayed with all sorts. Seven up. You fucking fly killer. You name it. That's on it. But what? we don't know for a fact what's on it. Do you get me? Yeah, no, so I get it. But, like, the, the, but the, I know, but the, you're no one's forcing you to buy it, Carl. So if you go along and and go to a drug dealer and you're buying weed that's been sprayed with some pesticides or whatever crap, you know what I mean? That's the risk you're taking. No one's forcing you to do it. You're taking that risk. Yeah, I, no, I totally agree with you. Look, I bring all the risk on myself, but that's the problem. I just love weed and, so much and, and I cannot tone it down. No does, it ever, does, it, does it ever cross your mind, Carl? Because as I say, look, it's one thing going into a cafe in Amsterdam and it's all above board and it's, it, honestly, it, you nearly think like it was like a normal coffee shop or a bar. You nearly forget that they're selling weed. Um, there's a difference between that and then going up to a drug dealer in Dublin. Does it ever cross your mind that the money that you're handing over to some of these dealers is, is going into the wrong hands, probably going towards... Gang, gangland criminality. Look, Keith, if you put it this way, like, when you're giving them, if you give them your money and you're taking the weed off them, the last thing I'm thinking about is what he's doing with that money. Do you know what I mean? I, I just want that, to give yeah. him the money, I want, want to get him yeah. weed, and I want to go home and enjoy myself. I don't understand why people are saying, like, weed is, is bad and it makes you sleepy and this and that. I could sit here in my room all day outside the house, whatever, because I don't smoke inside the house, so I go outside and smoke it. But I can roll a joint in my room constantly. Roll a joint, smoke it. Roll a joint, smoke it. Roll a joint, and smoke it. do you have any, any side effects? Do you have any side effects, Carl? Surely, yeah, what, surely no, you must have no, some no, side effects. I'm going to be honest with you, Chris. Oh, uh, yeah, Keith. I'm gonna, I actually am going to be honest with you. There, yeah. has, there has been a lot of side effects on my behalf. I've been heavily depressed the last while and whatnot. But you have to understand, when I'm really, really depressed, when I, when I get a joint into me, it changes my mood completely. 
Completely. Like, I could be the nastiest. Like, if my mother was to say something to me, like, so simple, I would just turn and snap if I don't have it. But if I smoke a joint and she was to say that to me, I'd be as nice as pie. So it calms you so, down, chills you out. Yeah. So in all fairness, it does help some people. All right, I want, to, I want to bring Trev in for a second. Uh, stick with us, Carl. 53104 for 20 cents or 6797F104. Weed is not chemically addictive like, uh, for instance, heroin, where your body becomes chemically dependent on it uh, and it's dangerous uh, to stop, someone says. Uh, they spray it with mal- malithon. Malithon? Uh, an insecticide that uh, they discovered uh, was a nerve agent, someone says on 53104. Uh, honestly, you've been taking your life in your hands now buying that stuff. Uh, Trev, you're live on F104, hey, Trev. Well, all I can say is I'm hoping with these fuckers out operate heavy machinery. Joint, 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 joint. That's all I'm Actually, thinking never, about. Actually, I never, well, funny, you know, I never, Carl, like, what do you work as? Do you do a, do you do a job that requires you to have, have the, your wits about you? Look, I can't actually tell you exactly my job, Keith, but I do work from nine in the morning until eight in the evening. Okay, but it, but I know. Look, I don't want you to be too specific. Is it an office job or is it a job that you're, you're on your feet or you're using your hands? Stuff that you'd need a bit of coordination for. Look, I'll tell you this: it's a cleaning job, yeah. And to be okay. honest, with you, it's very, very stressful. I would not be able to smoke a joint before I went into work. That's that's being honest with you because I'd be too laxy daisy. All right, well, um, there you go, Trev. Uh, it's a stressful job as a cleaner, so he needs to smoke weed every day. Uh, wait, uh, sure, I have plenty of mates of smoking and I tell you, Keith, did you ever get in the car with one of them dopey muppets after they have them? Listen, mate, just just let me just let me go in there one for a second, okay? Oh, yeah. As I said, as I said, I've been smoking joints for the past, I don't know, it was like it's 10 years or whatever, yeah? And yeah. All, all of my mates have smoked it, right? Now, we're, we're the type of lads that would buy cheap cars, have a, uh, get a bag of weed and we'll head up the back roads and smoke the life out of the bag of weed rally the shit out of the car I mean have a fucking great <laughs> don't, don't, don't be laughing listen to me mate you're yeah, showing your intelligence now you mate you God on his fruit yeah we can go up to the back roads and rally cars and this and that and we're still the same all that bullshit when people say oh you smoke a joint you get in a car you'll crash this and that it's down to you to crash it's not down to the weed it's down to your reactions if you're quick enough to react well then you're sorted and that's it so even though the drug alone has been proven to slow your reaction time you're telling me you're like Superman your reaction time is not affected by it it doesn't slow you down, man. It relaxes you. It does. You. It, you know, it, it does. Scientifically proven to slow you down. Scientifically proven. Sorry, I'm using big words here. I know, Gary, get it. Just try and stay with me here. Even though it's scientifically proven to slow your reaction time, you're the exception to the rule, are you? Well, here I am now. And to be honest with you, I drive a car every morning to work, yeah? I have my own car that I don't pay tax and insurance yeah, for. Yeah, but you just... I mean, oh, jeez. I'm, I'm in that car nearly every night with the lads, and there's never a problem. Never a problem. Never have I had a near miss. Never have I ever hit a child. Never have I ever hit anyone on the street. And why is that? Because I take caution. You know what, what, I mean? what, what, what do you mean? What caution? What caution do, do you take? Surely the caution that you, the only caution you could take is not smoke weed before you get into a car and drive, Carl. No, that's key. You're wrong. I will. Say, I, I will love. I love smoking a joint and getting I'm, into I'm a sure car you do. and going cruising. You know what I mean? And go cruising. Go on, sorry, Trev. Yeah, Keith. He's already said from the minute he wakes up to the minute he gets home to he sparks that joint. That's all that's on his mind. He sounds like a great employee, and then he says he's out with the boys smoking joints, rallying the cars, and then he says without tax and insurance. Yeah, this um, is the future of our country. We feel and what's wrong with that? Balls. What's wrong with that? <laughs> what you, so you don't see a problem now with being on drugs and driving no insurance or tax? But that's my that's my problem. That this is not. No, 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 no. Listen to me, you down. Listen to me, you retard. It is not your fucking problem. It's the problem with the person you might eventually crash into, who will not be covered for any medical expenses they might need because of your fucking stupidity. You know what? You're just the biggest. Oh, I tell you, if I could put my hands around your neck, you wouldn't be alive tomorrow. 
If you put your hand, you wouldn't get a chance to put your hands around my neck, son. But listen, anyway, we're getting Car- off Carl, the subject. Carl, you seem to we're be a bit... Off the subject. Well, 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 you brought us there. Carl, I mean, you seem to be a bit surprised that uh, Trev is angry at the fact that you openly admitted that you smoke weed and drive, you have no tax and insurance. Like, I mean, wh- why are you surprised that someone would be angry at that? It sounds it sounds a no, bit dangerous no, no. to me. No, I'm not surprised. What I'm, what I'm surprised is the way he's saying that, oh, but what if you go out and you hit a child? Well, have I had a, have I hit a child in the last no, five years? No, thank God you haven't. No. With no tax and insurance. No, I haven't. And, 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 I've, and, and whenever I'm driving the car at night, I'm always stoned out of my head. And I've never had a near miss. I've never hit a child, as he says. I've never killed somebody. So... That's a proven fact. You can drive while you're stoned. It's down to your reactions. It's down to how you control your car. That's how I it get is. it, but surely you, surely you admit that. Like, I mean, it's been proven. I mean, the, the reason why you take cannabis or any drug, I suppose, is to alter either your mood or, you know, how you react to certain situations. When you're drunk, you, you're slower to react to stuff. You feel very happy. You might feel great. You might feel, you know, $100 million. It doesn't mean you get into a car and drive home if you're pissed. Do you know what I mean? Surely cannabis is the same thing. It's not the same thing. So you, I mean, it's when, not. when you take it to get chilled out, don't you? You take it to ch- get chilled out and relaxed. I, I, should, I, I take a few joints to yeah, chill out. To and chill relax. out and relax. I mean, and should you it. should you be should you be driving a vehicle that's capable of going hundred and whatever hundred and fifty kilometers an hour if you want? Should you know driving a vehicle hundred and fifty kilometers an hour? Should you be chilled out and relaxed? Sounds to me like you should be alert. You should be completely you know uh, aware of what you're doing. But of course aware of what you're But you're not doing. really. What? If you're stoned, you're not. Well, Keith, why do people think, like if you look at it this way, right? If I was to drink, if I was to drink a litre of vodka and yeah. jump behind the car of a wheel, you'd be what, pissed. Would be first, what would be the first thing that happened? Jesus you'd be pissed. You'd probably fall asleep. You'd yeah. probably get sick or something. No, and, and, and obviously the, the first obvious thing, you would crash and probably crash into somebody. Yes, yes. Did you ever hear, did you ever hear of anybody being stoned out of their brains on weed and crashing into somebody and killing somebody? No! That's Keith, what I'm trying to find. Yeah, Trev. Yeah, Trev, yeah. Trev, been, yeah, go on, Trev, yeah. There's never been a road death proven that the person driving the car has killed this person because he was on... Car, why, why do you think? Why do you think Gardy? Why, so, why do you think Gardy are, are are not only testing for drink driving, now they're testing for drug driving? This is the thing: that drug driving it does cause deaths. Obviously, well, if you're yeah. off your face on anything, I'd, I'd imagine if you took a million norfin and jumped in a car and drive, you I don't wouldn't. understand. I don't understand how you're classing it as a drug. This is a plan. Well, tr- go on, Trev. Yeah. In your own words, you said, your own words, you said, if your man said that you, you could turn around and snap a whore. And then, in the same breath, you turned around and said, but once I have my joint, I'm chilled. Nothing will affect me. Yeah. Those were your words. Yes. So and you're telling me, that drug has made you chilled, so you're relaxed, you're calm. Yeah. And then you're getting behind the wheel of a car. Yeah, but I'm still yeah, aware. That makes a lot of sense. I'm still that aware sense. of what, I'm still aware of what I'm doing. That's what you don't understand. I could smoke a half ounce of weed in one day. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. And still get in a car and drive it. No problem. Without any faults. Without any crashes. Without any near misses. You have it all wrong. So the- it's a different story if you were to put a heroin addict in behind the car yeah. of a wheel. The first thing he's going to do is either lose control kill somebody or kill himself. So all the all, all, all the all the adverts, all the warnings that we see about don't drink and drive, don't do drugs and drive, all them are just pure paranoia that actually it seems that everyone is capable of driving a car under the influence of drugs that it, for some reason the guards are just a bit bored and that's why they're stopping people. That's 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 more that that would be my opinion, yeah, because right. they have nothing to do and they're being sent to to just case anybody anybody they need to see the thing well, is, there's a lot of there's a lot of people texting in now Carl who are quite shocked that they had to share the road with someone like yourself that that's you know smokes joints and drives it smokes a lot of joints and drives you just admit it as well hang on hang on I want, I want to bring Adam in this I've been waiting for a while Adam sorry I've been keeping you waiting uh, you're live on F104 what do you want to say Adam hey Keith I just wanted to say to Carl Carl yeah. what you're talking you don't even have a clue what you're talking about you really don't you're saying like you can smoke a half ounce. The reason you can smoke that half ounce is because you smoke in the morning when you get up until you go to bed at night. So that stone, no, you're that, not listening. That, 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 stone, that, that stone doesn't even leave your body. You're constantly, 
stoned on weed. And the, the levels of THC that's in the amnesia haze, the cheese, all that's going around now, all the cushions is just way too high to be smoking all that amount, getting in the car, and you're just... You're, you know so, so what are you saying, Adam? Are you saying that weed is a bit different from what it used to be? It's a bit more... It's, yeah, it's twice as strong. Like. Mm. It's treble to strength. Like, I mean, you can get grades of weed if they start hitting their 20s. Like, have you, have you, have you, have, have, how often have you smoked weed in the past, Adam? Do you still smoke weed? No, I don't. Um, I, well, I would. I would. I'd have, a, I'd, have a, I'd have a smoke maybe on a Friday night. A friend of mine called over. Like re- re- recreationally, like for the crack. Yeah. Not, yeah. not for I any do, injury I or do, whatever. I do smoke a, a pollen, a type of pollen. A type of um, pollen? Yeah, it's a type of pollen. And, you know, you don't burn it. It's not hash. Like, it's just you break it off into small little bits and you put it in. And I have one of them maybe every night before I go to bed. That's great. What's, well, hang on. I've never heard this before. What, what, what do you mean a type of pollen? What's it called? It's just, it's, it would, would be... A lot lighter than you know, like okay. it would be. It would be a, like a lot, lighter, a lot cleaner than the hash that that the shit that they put into that. And where do you get it from? You still get it from a drug dealer, though, do you? Well, I would have to, because you know these people, the, the, the dopes in Ireland, are letting the, everybody from here go over and buy it in somewhere else and spend all the money over there. Whereas if they made it legal, you know, they, if they if they made it legal in cafes, because people are still going to go to drug dealers if they can't get if they can't afford these medicines. These medicines are going to cost an absolute bomb. To make. Now, if they set up grow houses within Ireland, they could make absolutely millions upon millions. Well, yeah, no, I get it, but then again, you know, there's lots of things that the government could probably make absolute millions upon millions a year. You know, lots of stuff that you could. Like, like, I mean, look, if the government just decided tomorrow, let's make heroin legal, I'm sure yeah, they can make millions on that as well. It doesn't mean it should yeah, be legalised. You, you, you see, it has to, like, I mean, if, if you're going in with a problem, you can't, you're not going in, if you go in with a, with, with, with a problem, like, say, if, it, if they regulate it, that you go in and this is your problem, mm. they, they, only, it, it, they can only give you such a high strength so that you're not getting hooked, because it does get you hooked. I smoked lemon haze when it first came out, and I mean, I was smoking an ounce a week. I was about 18, you know? And that's like... That must have messed with your head, a fair bit. Yeah, like, if it was from morning to night, on the game, just playing, just fun. Well, would, would, you, you know? would you consider yourself, Adam, addicted to cannabis? No, no, no. You know, I, I walk from I walk from ten till six. I do maintenance, mm. but then I go to the gym. I come home. We have dinner. You know. Like, so, so you smoke weed and go to the gym? No, I don't smoke weed. I wouldn't smoke with, like weed like uh, only on a Friday night. Okay, so I, you, you know, just smoke uh, pollen. I'd have a pollen maybe mm. maybe for a very light joint just. All right, well, just, there you go, Trev. Trev, he just smokes very light light stuff. It's the light kind of version of weed. Pollen, I've never heard of it, but there you go. You know. Does he drive after, haven't he? I don't drive at all, Trevor. I don't know, man. Like, like I'm sure, like, Keith, I wanted you like, to actually put the question back to that, that other fella, Carl, is he a good driver? He's still there. Of course he's not a good driver. How could he be a good driver? He, no, he I was waiting for the typical response. I'm not a driver, I'm a pilot. Carl, Carl, do you no, consider no, yourself no, a no. good driver? No, can I get in here? Can, yeah, can I get in there for a second? Yeah. Listen, you have it all wrong. Uh, is he a good driver? No, I'm a serious pilot. Sorry, mate. I'm no serious that? pilot. Listen, I'm no serious pilot. I'm no mad fucking rally driver, handbreakers, every corner. You just said you were. Yeah, no, no, no. Listen, let me finish. I go to places. I go to places where I know it's suitable to act the bollocks in a car. All right. I would not listen. Listen to me. Let me speak. Just let me finish. Calm down. Listen. If I was to go into a car park and mess around with nobody in it, the only person I can injure is myself. And that is what you you get out of that going into a car park and driving around. Part of the adrenaline, but it's part of growing up, Keith. Do you know what I mean? We all done our own things back in the day. Like it's all have it mixed up, man. Weed is not a drug. It's actually not a drug. It's coming from the ground. It's a plant. God gave this to smoke. Say, 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 say the same about heroin. Say the same about cocaine. Heroin grows from opium populace. That's where it comes but from. Grows the, from problem the, ground. Is, the problem is heroin has everybody walking around like absolutely dribbles. 
So, heroin, heroin is one of the cleanest drugs in the world. Oh, here to we take, go. To, he has to take, if it's taken in its purest form. Not messed with. The stuff they put in and the way they had the people on it. Like, people smoked it in, in countries for years. Like, it's, it's, not that, it's not that long banned in, in India and Pakistan and all these other places, you know? When you smoke heroin, you're selling, the, you're selling your soul to the devil. Like, That's exactly like, what they're doing. These people when you smoke addicted. weed, when like, you smoke weed, are you selling your soul to the devil then? No, no you're you, not. You, when, you go to, when you go to a weed dealer, right? Did you ever go, uh, offer cocaine to your weed dealer? I did, yeah. Because did he sells both. Did you ever get offered Zimos? Zim, I took Zimos. I, I've done it all. I've yeah, done well, it all. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. If they had, if they had some sort of regulation on cannabis, that was here. Yeah, it was for here. Yeah, you, you can only buy so, so much a week, so people can't get addicted to it. Because if you're not smoking it 24 seven, you won't get addicted. Yeah, but you know, I know. But you know what might happen? You might just get people go. Fair enough. They'll go. They'll get it over the counter in a pharmacy, whatever, and they won't. And that's they, what's gonna. That's what's gonna live. Exactly. Yeah, the but they'll, they'll end up. They won't have their. They won't have their fill, and they'll still go out to a drug dealer. Plus, they're gonna. And this, like, you will get a lot of people that won't have to go to drug dealers, but. Like drug dealers are cheaper than these shops are ever going to be. Everybody has it wrong. This, 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 this medical stuff is completely different than to weird. If you, if you, if you what, what medical? What, what medical stuff? What are you talking about? Um, med, like what, the, the, the cannabis oil. oil. Yeah, yeah, cannabis oil. Yeah, I said, I said that already. Yeah, it is different. Yeah. Medical oil. Yeah. That's, that's not cannabis. It, it's no, I know that. I've said oil. that already. Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's to fix sick children. So why are they giving cannabis oil to fix sick uh, to fix sick children? Well, it looks it looks like that might be coming in. It looks like that that might be coming no, in. No, that's more than well, that's more than likely to come in. But exactly. I'm telling you now, the way they're all saying, "Oh, coffee shops, you walk in and this," that is never going to happen in Ireland. You don't never. think so? So you, so you think, Carly, you think it's always going to be just for medicinal reasons that it's not going to be recreational, that you're going to be able to go in to a coffee shop in Grafton Street and buy a joint? There, you don't think that's ever going to happen? There is not a chance in the world that is going to happen. Could you imagine, could you imagine, be honest now, could you imagine the amount of absolute scum you would have in each of the of the coffee shops well, you, didn't, like, you didn't have scum you didn't have scum in Amsterdam there's a lot of just normal people sitting right. there couples just smoking right. weed because because they have it all right they have it all right their country is amazing I've been there mm. I've done that I've smoked the weed over there right, okay. the weed over there the weed over there is completely different to the weed over here yeah I assume they don't spray it with it. crap I mean Carl do not you not ex- with crap. Carl do you not accept by the fact you, do you not accept that maybe by the fact that you're visiting a drug dealer as often as you do that you're going to be exposed to other drugs like cocaine like Zimmers like everything uh, Adam <laughs> mentioned there so you're more likely to go from cannabis to heroin or or, or you know, harder drugs. It's Surely happened. it's more likely. So do you think it's a gateway drug? It, it, it's happened. It's, it, it can be a gateway for some people. Look, well, it, it, if it's well, a gateway, then it's not really a harmless drug then, is it, Carl? If it's a gateway drug. No, not really. But what I'm saying is it's your choice if you want to go from weed to cocaine to heroin to tablets like you're choosing to do this. Somebody mm. else hasn't got a gun to your head to say, look, you're finished smoking weed now. You're going to move on to heroin. Do you know what I mean? Like this is it's 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 your own choice. I chose to go from weed to, to tablets to cocaine, and now I'm off tablets. Now I'm off cocaine, cocaine, and now I'm back to the weed. And it's the best choice I've ever made in my life. All right, uh, Adam, I'll leave you with the last words. Uh, do you think? Yeah. Do you ever? Do, do you think it's ever going to be like Amsterdam, where you can go into a cafe no, and buy? It? No, look, all I wanted to really explain was that if you use it moderately, if you don't use it like Carl uses it. You know, it can be a recreational drug, and it should be legalised. In in we, there would have to be really high regulation on it. Mm. You know, but like, I don't know. Like, I don't think these these dispensaries or coffee shops are ever, are, are ever really going to come. You know, mm. you'll always have to buy off the drug dealer. So you know, they're not going to change it. Yeah, I'm just, you know, and I'm I'm still thinking. 
does Grafton Street or more so Connell Street is that what we need more people stoned off their, their heads it happens anyway and that's regardless of uh, any uh, weed cafes but listen thanks for all the calls and texts and that 6797F104 uh, is the number weed is a lot safer than alcohol tobacco even aspirin when used for pain control you must ensure you are still in a small amount of pain otherwise the addiction problems start uh, I've seen too many people get up for work in the morning having a spliff and decided not to bother to go to work Um Another person uh, says, can you ask your listeners if any one of them uh, would choose weed over buying food or paying a mortgage? Uh, someone says from 52104. I would assume they wouldn't put it over buying, uh, buying food. Uh, I don't think it's that addictive, is it? Uh, someone says, your man smokes weed every day. He's stoned now, for God's sake. Uh, I think that's Carl they're talking about. Um, where else? Uh, a lot of people uh, seem to be... Uh, Upset that it, I, don't, I don't think I mentioned once that uh, weed was m- worse or more serious than alcohol. I don't think I mentioned that worse. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, anyway, I, uh, I'm 27 and I'm an alcoholic. I drink drive every day. Uh, I've been doing it for the last 10 years and I knocked a person down before, but I still drink drive. Uh, someone says uh, on WhatsApp. Get us on WhatsApp as well. 87 Um Another person, please uh, don't read my name out. I suffered from terrible anxiety the past few years and prescribed medications did not work as I woke up drowsy and could not function in my job. So I decided to try hash. Anyway, I'm in a full-time job and part-time education, passing all exams each semester. The last year, uh, the last year hash has allowed me to function daily without the need for medications. I believe it should be legalized as it has helped me tremendously the past year and can help others in a similar situation. Uh, well, that's the line, isn't it? The last year then has allowed me to function daily without the need for medications. But I suppose that is the medication. You are taking medication. You're taking weed uh, for medicinal reasons. So that is your med- uh, medication. Um, let me see. Uh, uh, I've let me see. Uh, I've a daughter, and if I knew that fella and he lived in my area, I'd make sure that he'd never smoke a joint again. Never mind driving a car because I'd cut his, you know, what's off. Uh, someone says uh, on WhatsApp. Um, I just couldn't really. Do you know what kept Carl kept saying it? Kept saying you don't understand. You're getting it all wrong. And you kind of going, sorry, we're getting it all wrong. Surely it's public knowledge at this stage. If you're driving a car under the influence of cannabis drink or any sort of drug you're not you're just not you're just not going to be able to drive the car the same way as if you know you're totally sober that's just a scientific fact and you know if you if, if nothing happened to your body when you were taking these drugs then you wouldn't take it would you you kind of you, you take it for some sort of you know experience and um if you didn't get that sort of experience, you wouldn't be taking it. So obviously you get some kick in it and you're obviously driving with it. Uh, the weed nowadays is sprayed with different chemicals to get you high. At least if you uh, get it from a doctor, it won't have these chemicals uh, in it, uh, someone says on 53104 uh, for 20 cent. Um, someone says, can you update and fix the podcast? It's the first show. It's the first show of the all new phone show. So uh, there aren't any podcasts to put up, but there will be some podcasts uh, tonight um, coming up uh, after the show. We'll be popping up uh, the pocket, the very serious uh, interview that we did with Gary Dargan uh, earlier on, whose uh, mother was uh, heinously murdered in her kitchen uh, by uh, a nut shop, uh, James Redmond, who was uh, sent. Uh, he got he was sent down, but he basically he could be out um, in a couple of months' time because he uh, was found guilty, uh, not guilty, should I say, by reason of insanity. And there was a lot of people texting in uh, who had a lot of anger for the justice system, but also some people who had uh, a lot of sympathy for uh, James Redmond and people in those situations calling it a bit of an episode. Bit of an episode. He killed someone, and if he had his way, he'd kill everyone. But anyway, that podcast will be up on the F104 phone show uh, page uh, a little bit later on. 53 104 for 20 cent. 67 97 F104. Back after this. The all new FM 104 phone show with Keith Ward. Different radio for 2017.